Is it hard to make friends when you're like a transfer student? I think it's impossible to make friends. <laughs> this is such a lie. Anime would have you believe that the transfer yeah, student yeah, is like, every, every, the course. Course. The everyone student. wants everyone wants to know the transfer student. <laughs> Big surprise here, and I, and I'm gonna give you a huge reality check. But as right. an anime singer, anime is not exactly real. <laughs> no. Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash Taste. I am your host for today, Gant, and joining me as usual are the boys. And once again, I am hosting another guest. No. <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Or tell uh, the viewers hey. what you do, I should say. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Nano. Um, you probably don't know who I am, but nice <laughs> to meet you. Nice That's to meet you guys. Nice very, very you. humble start. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say. You were the only reason why I loved Batum so much. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The Batum yeah. opening is so goddamn good. That's I'm just gonna get that out of the way. I, I was... You know my song. Oh, yeah, I, of, course, of course. Who doesn't know your songs? Oh really? Yeah, honestly, from like that, especially Batum, but out of everything about Batum, I still remember the opening. Yeah, to this day. Yeah, wow. yeah to this day. Wow. And it's impressive because I don't remember a lot about that show. It's uh, <laughs> it's been it's been, it's been <laughs> many it's it's been it's been many many years, but yeah, I yeah. still the opening just fucking bang. Yeah, I just that, gotta that I gotta also, say that now. That and also Arpeggio Blue Steel opening is like so freaking good. I, like, it wasn't, wow. Okay, I do remember that show being quite bad. So, <laughs> but, but the opening though, you know. Yeah, opening's banging. Even though I'm really? not, I'm, but, I'm often mocked because I, I can't really appreciate music, but I have to admit your music. Yeah. I'll give, I'll give, <laughs> I thank like the noise. You, thank you. That is an honor. <laughs> Here, that is an honor to be here. The beeps and the boobs. So, do you want to introduce yourself a little to the viewers so they can okay. learn a bit more about you and who yeah. you are? Um, well, you know, as they said, um, I've sung a couple openings for anime, oh, yeah. uh, anime series. Anime series. <laughs> anime yeah. series. Using my words here um, because talking is not my job. So, you know. I mean, yeah, you you sing. I sing. Yeah. I sing. You, you have I, you have I a much more sing. lovely voice than we do. Where we just oh, talk no. shit all day. Yeah. And that's our job. Exactly. But you know, today is my uh, sort of YouTube debut day. So. Oh wow! Oh, you're debuting today. Yes. Yeah, so uh, maybe I'm going to be a YouTuber. YouTuber from now on. So. <laughs> I did see you did a YouTube live stream at one point. I so. did. I did. I would love to do more stuff on YouTube. So this today is sort of my challenge day, and oh, I'm okay. really okay. looking forward to sort of uncovering a new sort of me. A new, a new side Nano. of yourself. A, a new, new side. Nano. Yes. Exciting so. new adventure. Yeah. Exciting new adventure. The amount of pressure that, she just like dropped like on all of us. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Exciting new adventure. That's going to be my new uh, song lyric. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, God. So. Well, then. But yeah, because I was curious. Like, obviously, you've done anime openings and you do uh, your own original music, but how did you get your start in that? Oh, that's a really long time. You really okay. want to go there? Yeah, Wait, yeah, oh, sure. Oh, we, we got the time. We got the time. Let's just jump right into it. <laughs> I, th I thought about looking at the Wikipedia page. Oh, and, no, no, no. Don't, 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 I thought, go, no, there, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. I want to be like the, the viewer and experience everything about yeah, you. Exactly. Your, like, oh, that's, yeah, exactly. That's great though. So um, tell, tell us everything. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't go to Wiki. Don't go to Wiki. <laughs> Get your information from the real source. Yeah. Yeah. First hand. Uh, yes. <laughs> Well, um, I started off, um, well, I've always wanted to become a singer since I was little, but I started off actually on the internet. So I was an internet singer. I did a lot of YouTube, right? That that goes back <laughs> way back to history. Um, even before all this like YouTube boom happened, mm. I was a YouTuber. What, what year, so. what year, what year? I got to oh, ask. What year? Um, Way back when, it's like 2000 in like, Back when you had to favorite the videos and give five yes, stars. It, <laughs> yes, and like no matter what you did, you never got money for it. So yeah. That, you know. So, so back when it was a four by three yeah. aspect yeah, ratio. Yeah, yeah. Oh, OG YouTuber, brilliant. Yeah. I th is that when you started, Gant? I mean, I've, I started at kind of the beginning of YouTube. So you started yeah. like 2006, right? 2007. So 2007, yeah. YouTube launched in 2006 and I made yeah, my it was first. Late, it was late 2000s. Wow. So um, I was, you know, just on YouTube. I did my own original songs, uploaded videos, and then I started. You know, Japan started sort of getting into the um, sort of movie internet. YouTube. Into, into like the culture <laughs> and, and, of everything. So you're you're yeah. uh, half um, a full Japanese, half Japanese. I'm full Japanese. I was born and raised in America. My parents are both Japanese, so. Oh, wow. I'm kind of a hybrid. So bi okay. bilingual as well bi from your Bilingual, age. but I'd say I'm like, my roots are the stronger roots are America. So yeah. right. I still find a lot of Japanese things really like 
crazy, insane, <laughs> um, <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, so. I mean, we, we've talked about the weird things we find about Japanese culture all the time. I'm sure we'll I saw it. that video this morning. I watched oh. it before coming here, so I'm good to go. She did her research. She did her research. She probably did more research than us. I feel bad now. <laughs> well, I mean, I because like, you know, Connor's the kind of person who's like, I don't read the Wikipedia. I'd rather just hear it from the person. Mm, but like, yeah. I thought I would just dive slightly into the Wikipedia and kind of that's ask the, you that's to the like- call, That's the research. Yeah, yeah. Joe's yeah. Like, I like, wiki. Wiki. <laughs> wiki. I cite the wiki. But like, I'm the kind of person who like goes to the Wikipedia and then ask the person to confirm it if it's true. Cause yeah. you know, a lot of times Wikipedia is full of shit. Yep. You know, yep. they just write whatever the Actually, hell they want. I, right? I don't think I've ever even checked my own Wikipedia because I'm scared. <laughs> That's I, a level of restraint yeah. I can yeah. expect. Yeah. I'm scared to see oh, no. what's I'm written on there. I've, I've, I've checked, we have, we don't, I don't have a Wikipedia. I have a, like a YouTube wiki or something. That's yeah. like, and I don't the, want that. the amount of misinformation on that is just off the scale. Um, there's, there's like, there's like a list of, I think like my best friends in order on that wiki page. And it's, wow. <laughs> it is like the most botched list I've ever seen. Cause there's Scuffed friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I was looking at your Wikipedia and one part, one, one aspect that I thought was really interesting was how you got started. Right. And it was like, you started off by covering anime songs, Vocaloid songs, and then Really specifically, it said covering Avril Lavigne songs. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true? Is this true? <laughs> well, I've done a few of her songs. Yeah, um, right. But I wouldn't say I'm a huge Avril Lavigne coverer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done like Wh two <clears throat> two songs. Yeah, but like, it's it's weird because the Wikipedia made it out to so, be like you were like the ultimate cover artist for Avril Lavigne. Oh, yeah. Really? It's, yeah, it's it's specifically named Avril Lavigne along with anime and vocal. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I have an Avril Lavigne genre in my Wikipedia. That's that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for yeah. some reason, yeah. I mean, like, but then again, like, you know, when I saw that, I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense because, you know, you, you kind of do have like a very like early 2000s, like Avril Lavigne, like- But I do love her. I've, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. been listening to her music, but yeah. I wouldn't say I'm like a- An Avril Lavigne cover <laughs> yeah. It's like turning into an that, interrogation. Pretty, oh, are you really? <laughs> that's really big uh, for me, but yeah. 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 So like, what made you like, upload your first songs? Were you just like passing time or did you just, was this your outlet? Um, well, there was a, a time in my, this is pretty deep. This yeah. is pretty deep. Okay, there was a time in my life. We got time, we got time. There was a time in my life where I was completely like introverted. I was a stay at home kind of person. Even before all this um, cor Corona happened, COVID-19 yeah. happened, I was a stay at home person. Oh, right right, right I mean, there with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, you're, you're sp preaching to the choir now. Yeah, so this is like my generation right now. So, right. But, yeah. Um, yeah, during that time though, I still wanted to do music. I still wanted to reach out to people. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, oh yeah, internet, great. That's really uh, bendy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, and so I started uploading my own songs and lo and behold, I realized that there was a huge crowd out in the world that I could reach out to mm -hmm. right. through the internet. So that was my start. Wow. What, what was like your influences for some of your early songs? Was it mostly like anime and Vocaloid or was it just- Or was more, it Avril Lavigne? Or was it Avril Lavigne? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, there we go. Avril Lavigne, <laughs> definitely. Can't, can't live without her. But yeah, definitely um, I listened to a lot of different types of music growing up, mm. even from Disney to like British rock, American rock, uh, anime music, J-rock. Like I'm a huge widespread listener. So mm. um, I wouldn't just narrow it down to one genre or artist. Right. But, um, yeah, anime was a huge uh, start for me yeah. mm, because yeah. uh, anime music was my introduction to the Japanese culture, just like mm. you guys. Yeah. And mm. so, yeah. I mean, what what confuses me almost is how do you go from doing covers to then actually being the one singing the anime opening? What is that process? <laughs> like? How do you go from that? I'd like to ask someone that <laughs> to be honest. If you don't know who does it, <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably so many people out there on yeah. YouTube or on yeah, Nico or whoever, like all these utaites who are just like, if I just keep going, I might end up but being the one singing it, right? That's the thing. Like you have to just keep on doing it because that's what I did. And you know, whether you end up where you end up, it's, I don't know, but if you don't continue doing yeah. what you're doing, yeah. then you're never gonna get there. So does someone scout you or did you go, you know, sending in auditions or like, what was the um, process like to, I guess, even get, I guess, recognized by a company? Or just get signed, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, before I started though, I always thought that you had to reach out, you had to go there and get it yeah. yourself. But yeah. if you keep doing the things you do and you really enjoy what you're doing, then you're gonna shine and people are gonna, gonna listen notice. to right, you and right. people are gonna notice you. Mm. So if it's, if what you're doing is, 
right for you, then I think that someone out there is going to find you. And in my case, I was lucky enough to be found mm. by my director who uh, supported my debut. So, okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, when was this? Was this through YouTube or through Nico Nico? Uh, it Ni was through Nico Nico. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. Nico Nico is like Japanese older YouTube, version of basically. Japanese YouTube, yeah. right? Was yeah. it focused on anime or was it just everything? It was like Vocaloids at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I'm not good. a huge Vocaloider, to be yeah. honest. Um, <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. wasn't even like, you know, I wasn't that knowledgeable about Vocaloids, but I was right. just covering Vocaloid songs in English. Okay. Oh, okay. So okay. that was my big start, uh, covering Vocaloid songs in English. On Nico Nico? On Nico Nico. So oh, wow. there weren't a lot of people doing that. Back yeah, you, yeah, I don't think you have much competition oh, yeah, wow. on Nico Nico because they were like I think I think there's a small dedicated community on YouTube who translates and does mm -hmm. English song covers of anime songs and mm -hmm. uh, Vocaloid songs, but mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone posting on it on Nico Nico. Mostly because nobody can figure Nico well, Nico the out. Thing yeah, was, um, there were like two people covering Vocaloid songs in English, but those people were not native English speakers. Oh God. And oh. So <laughs> I was listening to that, and I thought, hmm, there could be something I could do. Yeah. Um, because I'm not that great at Japanese, but I'm great at English. Yeah, yeah. So why don't I just do that in English? And so um, I started doing that. And then the Japanese people were like, oh, this is new. They were like, oh, Eiko Jozu. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, exactly. They're like, why is, why is this person What's so What's your TOEIC score? <laughs> so, you know, that kind of sort of boosted up my views. Okay. And then after that, after the Japanese people uh, started watching, then my songs started reaching out to the uh, overseas community, the, mm. you know, globally. Right, right. So um, it was sort of like a, I don't know, a ripple, you know, out into the world. Yeah. So would you, like, would you say that you were bigger on Nico Nico than you were on YouTube back in the day? Or is that where you found your growth? Um, before I started Nico Nico, um, I was, my listeners um, were more on a YouTube level, but then mm -hmm. from Nico Nico, uh, it went like boom. So yeah. mm. I think my crowd started bigger on Nico Nico. Because what's always, what's always fascinated me is the difference between say like the YouTube anime culture mm -hmm. and just Nico Nico in general. I feel Nico like- Nico Nico is like a different planet. Yeah, it's to me as like a Western anime fan, mm -hmm. I see some of the stuff that's going on in Nico Nico and it just, one makes zero sense to me and two, <laughs> has seems to have some of the most talented creators I've like ever seen yeah. Oh, and yeah, definitely. and nobody's heard about them because they're on this on this one Japanese website that no foreigner can ever figure out mm. it's, it's also insane with Nico Nico as well because like I used to go on Nico Nico quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, like even before YouTube and it's just yeah as you said like for some reason creators on Nico Nico are just on a different level and none of them like do it to, you know, for like ad revenue or anything. Yeah. They literally do it out of passion. Yeah. And like, and, and you know, like so many like utaites and like sing and Japanese singers are all found what's on- a, What's Nikon an utaite? Utaite is basically, do, do you want to explain what an utaite is? Oh, you can do it. Oh, okay. Do it. <laughs> well, utaite is basically like a, a someone who does like covers of Vocaloid and anime and stuff like that. Basically it's oh, like, okay. it's like YouTube has its own version of utaite is called utaites. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think I have heard of this. Yeah, yeah. So basically it's just like, a, a, a you know, a, an amateur singer who does covers of anime oh, and that's cool. and stuff like that. And then like, a lot like, of them get, you know, uh, major record labels like, yeah. I don't know. So how, how long were you uploading on Nico Nico before you got like any kind of traction? I am, I was completely newbie. So um, really? there were so many bigger, greater uh, Utaites before yeah, yeah, yeah. me doing right. their thing. And I just started and I uploaded, I happened to upload my first videos. I think it was like 2000, really late 2010 into 2011. And then 2011, early in 2011, I got noticed by my director. Wow, so it was fast. like a few months. Oh, wow. And so I have no friends on Nico Nico. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and my probably uh, Nico Nico Wikipedia thingy, yeah. my bobber, is really like short and right. sweet. And I mean, because you were on it for like, not even I'll, a year. I'll right? be honest, if someone contacted me like four months into YouTube and like, listen, I want to give you a record deal. I'd be like, this, <laughs> this sounds like a scam. Um, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. I thought so, but I got a, direct um, sort of contact through a creator. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. So okay. who is called a Vocaloid P uh, producer. Mm. So- um, So confusing. Yeah, yeah, I know. The the words on Nico Nico are like really sort of- yeah, yeah. Nico Nico's lingo. a different planet. Nico, yeah. Nico, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to, I mean, it's like when you when you go on TikTok, you're like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. <laughs> why is everyone singing sea shanties? What's going on? You know? <laughs> so I, I, haven't really got, I haven't really got that far because to me, I've always known about the Vocaloid community, but mm -hmm. as someone who's 
quite ingrained to the weeb culture. I had the Vocaloid fad just kind of like went and went by and I had no idea about anything that was going on in mm. that community. Yeah, legit, the only way I could understand like half the memes that were existent on Nico Nico was to just like bite the bullet and go on 2chan. <laughs> I was like, cause it's, it's all just there. So I was like, oh fuck, I guess I have to go into this cesspool to understand it. And even then I could only understand maybe like 30% of it before I was like, <laughs> I just don't get this. <laughs> yeah. I just don't get this at all. Yeah. So but like what what was the difference between like say Nuka Nuka culture and uploading to YouTube for you for yourself? Um well like you said Nico Nico is very uh, like a closed community. Mm. Everyone is understanding they're like, you know, friends on there and it's like a parallel universe. It, it, Are people nice on that platform? Very nice, very nice. Wow. Very nice. But <laughs> that is I a parallel say universe. that I'm too knowledgeable about okay. it. So um, yeah, but I just think that it's like a, a universe in itself. So um, they kind of move along in the world at their own pace. So that was kind of different from YouTube. YouTube is very open. It's yeah. worldwide and there's so many people on there. So um, yeah, because yeah. I, I feel like because Nico Nico is so focused on the kind of like the anime and weeb side of the community mm -hmm. that it's it feels much more closed off mm -hmm. um and especially with the japanese speaking as well mm. but that that's that just makes me want to get into it more because it seems like an untapped gold mine are you sure about that i, I mean i don't know i don't know because i from, from from the outside looking in there seems to be like such a gold mine of content there oh, and dude, like especially people getting scouted professionally on that platform just shows that there is real talent in that platform. Honestly, like some, I'd say some of the best anime based memes have all originated from Nico Nico. Is like, Nico Nico still a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Is it like still popular? Yeah, Nico Nico's huge still. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's oh, okay. huge. Especially yeah, but, in Asia, yeah. it's big. And um, I'd, I'd have to say though, um, the talent on Nico Nico is amazing. Unmatched, unmatched. That's why what? I think all these record labels. What? Who? Katakawa owns Nico. Oh wow! Oh okay. really? I didn't know that. Well, thank you. Shout out! Such shout a great platform, <laughs> right, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not endorsed to say that at all. <laughs> I'm 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 curious. How do you then? Okay, so you get signed, right? How how long is it before you're you're you know given this opportunity to voice mm. an you know an anime opening and what are you allowed to tell us about that process and how yeah, it of went? Of course, like, I would love I'm, to. I'm so yeah. we, we have no idea. Yeah. Like, we, yeah. We've never heard of like anyone's firsthand experiences of going into that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. wow, so, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, you know, I've never actually just really looked back and thought deeply into this. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I I wouldn't say that this goes for every artist. But for me, um, the first time my director um contacted me wasn't to uh give me a record deal or mm. label uh record deal to make a debut yeah. it was to do a collaboration on a song a cover song that was going to be on a compilation album okay. that right. this record label was going to uh release and so i um sort of collaborated with them to put one song on there and after that um the director said okay so we've done one song together but what about we do a full album a debut mm. album together so uh, that was sort of my start. And from there, it was about a year, I think, that we went into sort of creation of this new, al my debut album. Mm -hmm. Right. And original songs had to be made. And so um, it was about a year that it took from me, from getting, um, from meeting this director until uh, releasing my first album. Okay. So you, so this album was purely just original songs that you had to write within that year. Yeah, I did a few uh, cover songs since, you know, my fan base was based on Nico Nico. So right. I did mm -hmm. a few uh, Vocaloid cover songs in English and I released a few original new songs. And then after that, <coughs> um, I released the album and then my first single actually came after that. So mm. my first anime tie up was uh, later on a few months later. Okay. So was that, was recording the album as well, like the first time you were doing like studio work or was it even in a oh studio? Oh my gosh. The first time in an actual studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was crazy. How insane. was that? Oh no, 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 no. That was like nerve wracking to yeah. the extreme. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, especially because it was Victor, Victor Studio. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah, yeah. like wow. a small sort of um, indie studio or anything. It was like mm. Victor Studio. It's like a major uh, record label. Was it like right? multiple yeah. people at the other side of the glass, like just watching? Exactly. And oh my that. gosh, me alone. 
phone um, in the booth and then all these like <laughs> official looking people scaring Were you given like people? direction and everything yeah. like exactly, that? Exactly, exactly. It's like the first time itself. I voice acted in, it, in like a yeah. proper studio because I we always used to just do it like in my house in front of my exactly. own. Exactly, yeah. I was a complete garage bander. Yeah, so. right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you have headphones in being like, uh, can you just do that again, please? It's like, mm, <laughs> this is weird. I hate the fact that people are watching and I can't see them. Exactly, and yeah. I, what I love about doing um, DTM Garage Band was that, you know, if you hated the take, you could retake it like a hundred times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was completely like, um, you know, your pace. And if you wanted to perfect it, you could perfect it. But when you're in the studio and there are people directing you and doing your recording for you, they kind of tell you what to do. Right. And even if you don't like your take, you have to use it or like- And there's like know. a weird pressure where it's like, exactly. I could do this a hundred times, but I feel bad for making them wait, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because, so, because that's paid studio time, isn't it? Yeah, so you yeah. feel pressure to have to kind of take them, like optimize the time you have because yeah. you, mm. you've only paid for a certain amount like, so you don't want to do slots. like another take with like the back of your head being like, oh, the director well, fucking hates I mean, me right now. When I was doing a lot of voiceover in London, I, I would like, I, I, I had this bad habit, right? Where I would flub a line. Instead of like just letting the like the line be bad and just like ask, can I redo it? I would just say like, fuck at the end of the sentence. So, so they couldn't use it, yeah, right? right? Cause it would be like, da, 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 fuck. And then they couldn't use that. Right. But then they start getting angry at me. They're like, don't do that. Cause, <laughs> cause, cause we, want, we wanted to use that or we could have like spliced it together. Yeah, so yeah. I had to stop doing that. Even though I, I liked, being able to be like, no, I don't like that take. I'm gonna ruin it. Let's do a new one. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, so that was the huge difference, I think, from becoming amateur to professional was right, that right. Um, from, from that moment on, you are doing your singing or mm. your work for someone or, you know, for, for work. So it's an mm. official thing and it's not just for fun. It's not a hobby anymore. Yeah. I guess, how was the transition? F what, one of the biggest transition is obviously getting paid for your work. Mm -hmm. And because I, I feel like you started off with this being a hobby. Mm -hmm. how, does, how did it feel like getting your first paycheck, doing what you love or, or how did that feel? <laughs> um, you know, like, but the weird thing about music is that it, it always continuously feels like a sort of hobby. And so right. it's probably different from another sort of type of work where you go there every day to do office work and mm. and it just doesn't feel like work. Mm. Like even when I'm doing my singing career, I'm always having fun. Yeah. I love doing yeah. what I love doing. So um, it just never feels like work for me. That's the dream, isn't it? It yeah, is. Yeah, that is the dream. What you I mean, love and loving what you do, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause for me, like I, I do my hobby for my job. I talk about fucking anime, but there are definitely Wonderful. some, there are definitely some days where I wake up and it does feel like work. And yeah. <laughs> and it's usually like mornings where I'm like, okay, I have things to do, but I really don't want to do it because it's going to feel like work. Fuck it, I'm not going to work today. <laughs> the beauty of being self employed, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so when you made that album, how was that kind of like distributed? Was it aimed at like Japanese audience? Was it aimed at like English audience? Like what platforms? I'm just, I'm curious about the whole process and how it was kind of like aimed around. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, uh, our platform was based in Japan. We right. were, you know, releasing stuff, um, especially anime, you know, is based in Japan. So right. yeah. our outlet was sort of to the Japanese audience, but somehow, um, you know, little by little, the, the global community so grew to knew about me. Mm. And um, I began doing sort of event lives and things overseas as well, like oh, in cool. Asia and America and Germany, Australia. I went to Australia as well. So yeah. I'm jealous. That's <laughs> 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 yeah. the only Australian in this room I have to go, yeah. yeah. yeah Are there any Australians in the house? Yeah, me. <laughs> Good day, mate. Get out of my I don't want to hear your British accent. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you do the good day mate on stage? I did. Oh, oh. How did people take that. I had to do it. <laughs> Who told you to do it? No, no one. I no just one? wanted to do it. Is that like a thing that you do for like different countries that you go to? Like, do you learn um, how to say like hello or whatever in like different country uh, in different languages? I try to, but at the same time, like I'm usually like restricted uh, time wise, so yeah. I don't have time yeah. much to talk. But if I had time to talk, I would. Probably do a lot of. Hey guys, just gonna talk for fifteen minutes before I perform. Hope that's okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Kanye West. No time, no time to sing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many places have you performed? Out of curiosity, now. Um, mostly in Asia, but America, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Germany. Okay. Well, whereabouts in America did you go? San Jose, California, Atlanta, Georgia. So like anime conventions or yeah, anime just conventions. Oh, okay. oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 
and uh, New York, which is my home city. So How was it like performing in your home amazing. city? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Um, going just going back there felt like, you know, going home. So I, I, yeah, I felt that uh, like two years ago when I went back because I'm from Sydney mm -hmm. uh, in Australia. So like uh, we have a convention in Australia called Smash. Um, oh. Yeah, like big, big anime convention. Yeah. So like getting invited there as a guest just felt so much better than like any other con experience I've ever been to. Cause it was like going back home and being like, look how much this city has grown. <laughs> so amazing because right. I went to smash in 2013 when there was like 2000 people, 3000 people, something like that. And the year right. I went, there was, I think <clears throat> maybe 50, 60,000 people wow. that went to the con. So just seeing how much it grew wow. was like, you know what? I love my city. <laughs> this city's pretty freaking dope. The one time you feel patriotic. Yeah, right? yeah. The one time where you're like, oh, it's it, oh, it, oh, it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I just see an open field and I'm like, wow, that's that's, oh, that's, like, that's, oh, a, that's, a, that's awesome. Uh, that's a lot of sheep right there. <laughs> yeah, you probably feel amazing though if you were like invited to a con in Wales though, right? Mate, there's like none. There's like no con. Yeah, there's, I, none I, I, at all. there's one. There's I, one. I, I would like to get invited to a con in Brighton, but like the UK con scene is just, non-existent really like it's yeah, sure, yeah as you would know <laughs> <laughs> because we have i think one big convention which which is not even a convention it's like mcm and that's mm. more like an expo and that's like a comic gaming films mm. and also anime expo oh Oops. right 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 okay were you a convention goer before you started making actually music? i've never been to a convention really just by myself so that was a huge big culture like experience for me. That's crazy, right? Well, I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel like it's, I, it would be scary to go to a convention by yourself. I don't know about your guys' first convention, but- uh, I mean, I didn't go until I started YouTube, so. Really? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, well, I mean, besides Smash in 2013, but I was already doing YouTube back then. Right. But like, even then, like, I had to be like, yo, anybody in my area that knows anything <laughs> about anime, I don't care if you've only watched like one episode of Dragon Ball Z, can you just come with me, please? Cause like, I don't want to go by my, cause it's fun. Like even at a con with like a couple thousand people. Yeah. It's just daunting going on your own because it's like you get there and it's like, okay, there's a bunch of people who probably like the same stuff as I do. Yeah. But there's a part of me that feels really weird just going up being like, so you like anime, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you can't really do that. No, I, I, I totally understand what you mean. Cause I, you're, I don't know how to properly break the ice. Yeah, right. So, it doesn't help in the UK that no one talks to each other. Yeah. yeah. When, someone talks, when someone talks to you, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel it'd be so much easier in America because there's already like this stranger friendliness going on, right? Like yeah. you can just talk to someone on the street and they'll probably reply back to you. Probably if you go to an anime convention in America, people will people would approach you sometimes. Yeah, I right. Feel, if you're just wearing a cool it cosplay or- It did not work like that in Australia. No, like, not, not in England at all. I've never done cosplay before. No. Have you never? No, have oh. you? Have I, have, you? I, have, I haven't. Well, no. I've done quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, really? He yeah, kind of yeah. does that for a living in a oh. sense, yeah. <laughs> I've done it like once or twice. I'm, I'm not very good. <laughs> <laughs> when I say, when they say I do it for a living, that, that's very sarcastically. Wow. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. So boys, I have a confession. Yeah. I know we've been living in Japan at all, right. but I don't watch anime on TV here. What? Because I still need it subbed. What? And that's why I use Crunchyroll to watch my anime using ExpressVPN, because Crunchyroll I, I, is blocked here in Japan. I actually do that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I sometimes do that too. To I, I, need the, I need the subs, man. What am I supposed to do? Learn Japanese? No. I'm wondering, God. What shows are you watching? Right now, I am watching Jujutsu Kaisen, wow. Slime Season 2, and many more. Exarm as well. <laughs> but the good thing is ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so that you here. can control where you want sites to think you're located just by opening the app, selecting a location, tapping one button to connect and refreshing the page to access thousands of new shows and movies just like that. That's crazy, that's crazy. Choose from almost 100 different countries. Watch Studio Ghibli films on UK Netflix, watch anime on Japanese Netflix, watch Doctor Who on UK Netflix and see many, many more. This also works on any streaming service from mm. Hulu, mm. BBC iPlayer, mm. YouTube, and many more. You can stream in HD, no problem, no buffering or lag, and it's compatible with all your devices, phones, laptops, media consoles, smart TVs, and microwaves. It, no, it doesn't work on your microwave. Not only does it let you change your location, it also encrypts your data and lets you surf the web safely and anonymously. That is why you should choose ExpressVPN over other VPNs. So go to expressvpn.com slash trash taste to get mm. an extra three free months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash trash taste. That's crazy. You sure? 
I, 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 that's what the script says. Wow, okay, well back to the video. All right, so if you had to start cosplaying, who would be your first cosplay? Actually, like, I, I have no idea. Any recommendations? You should do a that's cosplay cool. of like, either a Batum character or like yeah. an arpeggio character. Like, like it would be cool if Batum, you did a- Batum, none of the characters look cool. They just, they're <laughs> literally just in like, safe hookers. It, wasn't there one female character in Batum? Yeah. That's, that's all I remember. It was the blonde, <laughs> blonde hair. It was the blonde hair girl, right? Hair yeah, in a school uniform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like arpeggio would be a lot more like cosplay friendly because it's neat. actually like interesting and like looks cool. And like, that, it would be dope if say hypothetically you sang the arpeggio opening in, in a cosplay, cosplay of yeah. an arpeggio character. Oh my gosh, that's really like, like that would be cheesy. meta. That would be meta that's as fuck. Cheesy. That's yeah. very cheesy. It's cheesy, but you know, <laughs> you know, con goers would fucking fall over that. <laughs> well, like, outside of just like uh, anime that you've sung in, mm -hmm. like what are some of your favorite anime characters that you, you would oh, like to cosplay, I guess. I don't know, but- um... Like looks aside, just, just anyone that you like. Uh, I don't know. I'm like putting I you on the spot here. I just watch much anime now still. Lately, I haven't been able to watch much, mm. but I've always like in the past. One of my favorite series have been like um, Full Metal Alchemist <laughs> and my, fa my favorite. God is notorious. Really, for not <laughs> he's notorious for not having watched it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as he should, because it's yeah. an amazing anime. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to get into yeah, that. We're not going to get into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I usually get into anime through the music. I've always mm. been a music yeah, lover, yeah. so um, you know any anime with really good music hooks me on and then mm. I start watching it. But I usually watch sort of like adventure series where the main character is like a guy or a boy or mm. not, not very like moi moi series. Right, 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 right. I feel as well like it, it makes sense with Full Metal Alchemist because the bang mm. the openings in that are oh, bangers. So, oh, yes. so I mean, many the, good I, I haven't seen Brotherhood yet, but like yeah. the, the first Brotherhood opening is fucking legendary. Oh yeah. And also, you know, the Asian Kung Fu generation opening as yeah. well. Like, uh, yeah, it's so much, so much good music in that. Uh, when I listen to anime opening songs, I can't figure out why I like them. I just like the noise. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious if you have like a, like you must have an uh, like an ear for it, right? Like, what makes like a good anime opening, in your opinion? I'm curious. Uh, if it's sung by me, yeah, you can say that as well. I'll, I'll keep that as a memo. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, you know, I used to listen to anime openings before I made a debut. So right. what I what sort of hooked me on was, you know, number one, it's really catchy. Mm. Uh, number two. Um, you know, it captures the mood of the anime very well. Mm, right. Um, and you know, um, I don't know, but number, th I don't, what makes, what makes an <laughs> anime opening? I don't know, cause I've, I have no clue. I thought maybe I, you could answer that question. I, I, I feel though you kind of answered that. Like yeah, it, it is all about like, if you just personally like it, it, it sticks in your head and if it fits the theme, right? Usually though, you know, um, if it's sort of, what do you call it? Like, koseteki, sort of, you know, um, individual. Mm. Then unique. Unique, yeah. yeah. Um, then it sort of stands out, and when something stands out, then like it catches your attention. Right. Yeah, because I, I remember when I when I was in school, and I watched a load of anime, and people would ask me the question of, oh, what are, what are, what are some what are what are the music you listen to? Who are your favorite artists? And I go through like my iPod or something, and it's just all fucking anime <laughs> openings. <laughs> Pass me the box. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, there's this really like underground Japanese band called like Asian Kung Fu Generation. <laughs> you probably haven't heard of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, like, that was the thing though, right? It's like, there was some kind of like level of like superiority in a sense being like, yeah, yes, I listen to underground Japanese music that you probably never heard yeah, of. Yeah, but, but now I feel like everyone listens to anime openings or anime music because everyone figures out that it slaps hard. Yeah. So now, now, now the superiority is listening to a band that's done an anime opening, but listening to all the songs that aren't in the anime. Exactly. <laughs> that are like every other song on the album. It's like, you only know the opening. I know the rest of the album. <laughs> no, it's it's like, I've, I've recently gotten, gotten into like a lot of uh, different artists who, well, like in, in like J-pop and J-rock who have not been in anime openings or have not done anime music, but sound like they should have done anime mm. music. And I feel like a lot of those people and bands really came up from the Vocaloid community. Mm. And I don't know, like that's, that's why there's so much I don't know about the Vocaloid community, but everyone seems to have come out of that community and have this kind of genre of music that just kind of appeals to Weeb. I can't 
I can't like quantify in words, yeah. but it's it's the kind of music that I just love. And I don't know what that genre is. Maybe you tight A's. Yeah, I guess it's like, yeah, I know I know what you mean though. It's like, it, it even if the genres are completely different, there's just kind of like a stylistic or like something about it where it's like, that sounds like it belongs in an anime. Yeah. Like you can very quickly tell like with, uh, with you know, Japanese music, if something is like made for anime and something's not made for anime. This is some quality about it that I can't grasp where it's like, yeah. That you can tell the difference in that, well, right? Well, one thing I did realize after making a debut as an sort of anime singer um, was that anime songs and, um, well, I don't know how do you say, but regular J-pop or J-rock, there is a distinct difference. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of people tend to like faster paced, really like energetic songs in animes right. because right. you're limited to one minute and 30 seconds of right. the yeah. opening right. and it has to catch your attention. So... Um, usually the ballads are saved for endings and the really fast pace, which is why I started singing like BPM 200. Right. <laughs> I'm just like dying in the studio because I've never sung BPM 200. And after all, after that, all my songs became like really high paced. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think I tried playing some of your songs on Osu and I, my mouse couldn't keep up. Really. So, I mean, what does that say? Just like I'm instant cop. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, it's going so fast. Yeah, so I really don't recommend, I mean, like money wise, yeah, please do sing my songs at karaoke, but yeah. I don't recommend uh, like singing my songs at karaoke because of the sort of level of difficulty. I mean, if, if you're having a hard time singing them, I don't know how some people, how us yeah, right? peasant normies are gonna be able you to know, sing I it. I personally would not sing my songs at karaoke. It's like, you know, when you get like two drinks in, you're like, yeah, I think I can do Eminem. And then you do it and you're like, I I, I didn't remember this many lyrics. Where were all these? I thought it was just Slim Shady yeah, but, stand yeah, up. But it's, what but it's not just Eminem. It's like the really long, like four versus <laughs> Eminem. Yeah. It's like seven over. minutes long, the song? <laughs> what? I thought it was three. Alternatively, where you sing, you, you choose a song and you think you know the lyrics and you, then you realize you only know about two sentences yeah. from the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's just this awkward one minute where you're just kind of like humming along to the verse, like, even uh, though you have- is, uh, is, uh, is, <laughs> is it annoying being a singer and then having to go to karaoke? Cause they expect you to like kill everything instead of just, you know, just shouting. I, this, I have a secret. I okay. sang my own songs at karaoke and um, you know, they have a really uh, weird system where they- Like the like MIDI to, soundtracks? Yeah. No, no, they have this weird system where they like to give you a score of how good you sing. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I turned that off, I don't wanna know. And <laughs> I sung my own songs and I got like a 60%. <laughs> 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 So I was like, <laughs> well, like I have Someone out the there is yeah. higher on the leaderboard. Exactly, I was that's, like, wow. So It's like when Charlie Chaplin entered like a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. Oh, it came yeah. in third. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like the equivalent. Like, <laughs> like the, the points where they score you are really, are very distinct. And I tend to like, um, do arrangements and do mm, weird yeah. like stuff yeah. with my songs. So I don't sing it exactly like I did at the studio. Yeah, right. So that, that uh, automatically like well, th me those more, those but. games do like the pitch. It's purely off pitch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's just like you could just go ah, and it'll like it'll it'll give you like it's just like very basic sing star kind yeah, of yeah, pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how they score. I, I, I'm a bad singer, so I, I've never scored well on any of those kinds of karaoke mm. games. That's why I turn it off. I don't want it on. <laughs> I don't want to know how bad I am at singing. It's very bad. <laughs> Have you ever been in the group who? hasn't known that you were a singer or, and then you just start singing your own song and they're like, wait a minute, you sound just like that person singing, no, singing the song. Sixty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, ever since I, uh, you know, made a debut, I haven't been to karaoke because it became, singing became my career. Ah, so like, yeah, yeah. It's it's difficult to do it for fun now. Yeah. So it's. Right. I, I mean, it's just work for you, and what it's. And when I start singing, I automatically feel like I'm on stage. So yeah. I, I think that's a little bit heavy for the karaoke goers. <laughs> so we're having fun. What is that? having a private concert right here? Yeah. But not, that's that's a little bit of a flex, right? Going to a karaoke and singing your own songs. That's so it. That's that's a bit of a flex. Go, then I usually am the one like just uh, putting everyone's um, songs into T tambourine. the machine. Yeah. Yeah. I love. <laughs> Doing the tambourine. Yeah. <laughs> I guess though, it would be such a weird pressure to go to karaoke with you. You absolutely kill your songs and be like, oh fuck, now I got to do sexy back. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the difference. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to know, when you uh, started doing the anime openings, how did that affect the album that was already out and how like you were, I guess your like level of fame, if you will, and how it all kind of, did, did you see any like results from doing anime openings? Definitely. Right. Um, 
I think my fan base sort of changed. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Of course, my my original fans stuck with me loyally, very loyally. As they don't right. do in Japan, right? Yeah. Yes, yes exactly, times. which is really an amazing thing. But at the same time, like, I started out with my fan base being mostly girls because um, on Nico Nico, I think a lot of the fan base was very, like, female-based. Mm. Right. My, my uh, fan base was female-based. Mm. But after I made an anime debut, so Batum, um arpeggio that made my sort of male fan base mm, um, yeah grow. and that was huge when i went overseas and did concerts i was really happy to see that my fan base my audience was kind of like hybrid you know yeah, like yeah. everyone was there not just like females or like males. anyone could enjoy yeah. Mm. yeah exactly and so you know and i always have loved rock and roll so you know i think it's not necessarily a gender-based um music genre so yeah. i was really happy to see that my fan base was growing um globally and a diversity and so yeah, that yeah, was i mean huge. you kind of went through a similar thing right like you went from like a primarily female fan base to more of a hybrid now right yeah yeah, yeah. Like, was it was it like similar to you where it's like you kind of saw that like if oh, he, he didn't have an anime to uh no, no. jump start well, his well i mean yes <laughs> he, he, he just went from he more he more so Black jumped Butler. off one yeah exactly <laughs> so to give you a rough example i just i basically used to pretend to be a british butler isn't, oh. that, isn't that fun? Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> How do you that's pretend fun? to be a British butler? Well, you just turn up the British accent more than usual. Yeah. So oh, you'd I go see. like, oh, I suppose I could talk uh, like this, you know. Okay. And, uh, he, he was he was a actual living anime avatar for a while. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I didn't used to like show my face much. Used to do stuff like that. But oh. I, I mean, anyway, that as you can imagine, that kind of thing would attract more of a female audience than a exactly, male which audience. is yeah. why my fan base is female because I uh, didn't show my face right, in the beginning, right, right. Mm. and my voice is pretty low for a female singer. Yeah. Mm. So. Um, a lot of people didn't know my uh, gender, mm, and right. so mm. they assumed uh, there was a huge fan base that assumed that I was a young boy. Right, so right, right, right. You can imagine the shock. <laughs> Shelter <Yeah>. boy. Shock. <laughs> you know, you can imagine the shock when I did my first l- concert. Probably. They're like what mm. the fuck? I wanted a young <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there were audience people like that. So. Um, but you know, after I started showing my mm, face, though, yeah. my fan base started to become more diverse, and not yeah. just you know to yeah. one genre. So. Mm. How how did like I mean did you did you ever used to have fan interactions, and if so, how did that change when you went from that audience? Because I noticed a very distinct change in how my audience, I suppose, behaves and talks to me. Mm. Uh, when it went to more male. Yeah. Um. But personally, I didn't have much interaction with my fan until fans until uh, my big. Yeah, my conventions and my lives. And so um, I don't really have like a comparison be- be- between right, my right. Nico Nico days and mm. my um, yeah. debut days. But definitely, I love being able to interact with like my listeners right now. This mm. is amazing. I love being able to hear them, hear their voices directly. And so like, I have no regrets about like going open mm. with my oh, identity yeah. and stuff. But do, do you feel like it really hits you when you go to a convention and you s- physically see the people that are you know in front of you that you're performing in front of because t- for us YouTubers we see a number and mm. the number kind of just doesn't means, mean anything means means nothing. Yeah. You, you don't see a face. Yeah, we don't yeah. see a face, and then we try to like even trying to quantify in in our heads. Just it doesn't mean anything until we go to a convention and we actually see the amount of people in front of us, and we're like, oh, these people all know me. Jesus Christ, that's it, a it's lot kind of, of people. Insane how it's like. A million views on a YouTube video seems so much smaller than physically seeing a hundred people in front of you. Yeah. And it's it's such a weird dichotomy how that works. And it's like, yeah. And it's like, you know, like we could be happy with all the views we get on all the videos, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really, you, you can't see anything, right? It, it doesn't mean, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, it means something, but it doesn't mean as much as it should. It's not as weighty. weighty. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Before you debuted, had you ever like performed on a big stage before or anything like that? No, my first ever concert in my entire life was in front of 2000 people. Wow. <laughs> a solo concert. Oh my God. And so when the when the curtain went up, I almost like- <laughs> Hi guys. Yeah, I was like, my voice is on. <laughs> like, you know, like- yeah. I just, just went up two octaves right yeah. there. <laughs> so like, I almost died on stage. <laughs> What's, what's the biggest crowd you've ever performed in front of? Um, it was at an event, Anisama, and that so that was uh, probably like Ichiman, so 10,000 somewhat Fucking number hell. of people. Wow. But when it <laughs> becomes that sort of number, you can't see the faces, so it's like right. a sea of lights, uh, like mm. pen lights right, and people. Right, right. And so it, you don't become nervous anymore. It's just like, 
when it's it's more nerve wracking when you're in a small venue and right. you see every yeah. single face you, you and they're can, all looking at you. It's the eye contact that really yeah, yeah, that yeah. really gets you. I, I find <laughs> because we don't have that experience. I mean, like, what's the biggest amount of people you've done a panel? AX, like? right? AX, I think. I mean, three thousand. I hosted in front of like three. Th yeah, two, yeah. three thousand people. 3, 000 and people, that right. I was shitting my pants. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I hate it when you just make eye contact with someone for like two seconds and you're like. Do you reckon they noticed? <laughs> they 100% noticed. Was that, was that weird? That was weird, right? Could you imagine like, doing a panel in front of 10,000 people? I would like to not. <sighs> yeah, I would yeah. like to not either. <laughs> I gotta ask, do you ever get, is it is like, do you ever get nervous before going on stage? Do you ever get used to that? Um, I'm not a huge person, uh, like a, a nervous person. So I'm right. usually pretty like excited to go on stage. Right. And I'm like, I'm gonna have fun. Woohoo, this is my home, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I really don't get nervous, but when I do get nervous though, um, you know, uh, it doesn't, it's every time I do get a little bit nervous. Yeah. I, I love being on stage. Because I, I feel for me, it's, it's, I don't know if it's nerves, but I just, I just, it's the waiting that kills me. I just want to yeah, get on stage yeah. whenever, whenever I have like a panel scheduled or whatever. And there's a lot of people, I just feel like, once I get on stage, I'm gonna be fine. But yeah. before that, I'm just I'm just restless. It's like it's like you're backstage and you just hear the murmur of the crowd, right? That's mm. when it's the most nervous. But the yeah. moment I start like going up the stairs, it's just it's just that, gone. That's yeah. exactly true. Yeah. Like I hate the waiting of it. The waiting is the most nerve wracking point. Once you're on stage, then you just gotta do what you gotta do. So Yeah. Did you discover like the first time you're on stage, was it like a aha moment? This is I love this. Oh, I thought, yeah, this is definitely where, you know, I want to be. I'm I'm so grateful to have this chance to actually do what I love doing. And I don't know. It's just, I'm so, this is perfect, you know, for me. Yeah, because I, I, I assume it's kind of like a trial by fire because you said you had no stage experience before because I, I can only imagine some other artists who just kind of didn't take to the stage as well mm -hmm. would, uh, would have would have would have fallen yeah. flat. I, I went on stage in Japan for a video recently where I like did like a visual K video, oh, yeah. and um, it was it was awful. I hated it really? <laughs> because it was like it was like thirty people, so it was very intimate, right? And like yeah. because it also COVID, no one was allowed to like move. Everyone just had to stand, yeah, which makes it even worse because I wasn't doing anything, right? I was just head banging. But anytime I stopped and made even like a millisecond of eye contact with someone, and they were just like. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm awful. I'm terrible. I'm ruining the whole thing. Um, yeah, needs to say, I, I was I was uh, not happy about it. It's, it's, I, like, it's like doing a performance in front of your family, right? And they just like being yeah. like- Yeah. Well, but at least your family, you know your family's gonna have your back no right, matter what. Right, right. I figured it out. When I have to go on stage and do something to actually be good at it, that's when I get nervous. Cause I'm like, mm. I have, people have expectations. Right. When yeah. I know that I'm, like, it's okay to be bad at it. And like, that's the whole joke. Uh, yeah, I like that because it's like, all right, I'm just gonna be a clown. That's what they care about. Right? That's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna And I guess do. that's like the, the benefit of like, you know, doing a panel for yeah, us, right? Yeah, is that yeah. like most, if not all the people who are attending it know us enough that even yeah. if we fuck up slightly, they'll be like, aha, oh, that's just yeah, him being him, you know? I have no talent. So what am I gonna do on stage? <laughs> <laughs> but I find I, I've only really, you know, my career took off in Japan. So right. I, yeah. I, I'm not an American based singer, but at the same time I grew up in America mm. and I've been going to concerts in America. And I did right. realize after my debut that the Japanese sort of entertainment industry is completely different from the American. hundred percent. A hundred percent different. And the sort of, um, expectations in Japan are very high. You have mm. to be perfect. You know, a yeah. lot of people are, you mm -hmm. know, require perfection as part of the job. So right. um, that is always <clears throat> very nerve wracking to be able to have to sort of think, oh, you know, I have to perform perfectly on stage, but that's impossible. You know, so. <laughs> I feel like it's even like that when you're ordering a drink at Starbucks here, they think yeah. like yeah. they has to, oh my God, they're gonna hate me. I didn't put the little straw in. And it's like, no, 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 it's okay. Yo, it's okay. Yeah, I feel exactly. so bad, they're yeah. freaking out. But I mean, how how is is the difference between performing in Japan and say America? How is um, that you know, like in America, I feel that when I go on stage, it's it's like a live, it's really like a live thing. Yeah. It's a live yeah. experience. Mm. You're with your fans. You don't. It's nothing is planned. You know, yeah. your set list is planned, but everything else is like. Uh, you know, got a lot more freedom. Yeah, it's freedom. Yeah. It's it's up to luck. Yeah, but in Japan, I think uh, even the fans are very loyal in the sense that they really want you to do your best, and they're always like hoping to do your best. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, so it's it's the expectations are completely different. I do love performing in Japan as much as I do love performing overseas as well. But yeah. at the same time. It's just a different experience, right? Yeah, I feel that um, Japan is more based on like you know just 
doing things absolutely to the best as you can and mm. always being, you know, just perfect. Has anything bad ever happened on stage or something that you didn't predict that you kind of just had to deal with on the spot? Um, luckily, I haven't had huge misses, but I'm always like the fear of miss messing up is mm. like here. So like I, that's healthy though. I think. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's you. You got to have that, right? If you're too complacent, yeah, yeah. That's like you very won't you true. won't do like your but best. But it does appear as nightmares in my dreams often. <laughs> like I, I don't know. How you wake many... up in a cold sweat and you're like, oh, what no, if I fuck I, up on stage? I I don't know how many times I've had nightmares where I completely <laughs> like that messed up my lyrics, healthy. or like I, I I don't even know my own songs on stage. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I'm like, what am I doing on stage? I don't even know what to sing. I don't know. I, I've, my lyrics are completely washed out. So I think um, like somewhere in my head, I'm always like, that's, that's a fear of mm, mine yeah. messing up on stage. So like, how is, I, I suppose, how has COVID kind of affected your schedule? What do you, like, what, what's a day in the life of Nano? What, what, do you, what, what do you do now? That you know you can't go on stage. What are you? Huh? What, yeah. what are you? What's, what up? What's, up to? What's up to? <laughs> but like I said though, um, as a, as like a regular like Nano, you know, not like a musician Nano, you know, mm, I'm yeah. a very stay at home person. Yeah. So this is very like not not too different from Comfort my yeah. comfortable. Yeah. yeah, it's not too different from You're in my, your comfort zone. But last year in 2020, I had a a lot of um, overseas events planned. A lot of my own tour was actually canceled last oh. year oh. due to COVID. So. Um, in the music industry, though, COVID has really taken its toll. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not just me. For all the musicians and entertain entertainers out there, so we're we're really struggling in that sense to be able to find new ways to um, reach out to the audience and to give back to the audience, even without being able to directly, you know, interact with them. Mm. So, but that's I think a good sort of start for us. Yeah. Because I I assume that being at home, have you had more time to work on new music or? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of creating at home. So we're right. we're using we're trying to use our at home time wisely. We're doing we've you know been creating music and getting ready for when the time comes when we're able to do lives again. Gonna be a hell of a comeback. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> Honestly, like once like COVID is gone, like the amount of concerts that are just gonna like oh. pop up out of nowhere. Everyone's like, oh, I don't know the time to go to all these concerts, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm just, want, there's gonna be so many events that I want to go to when things start opening up again. I, I'm yeah. just gonna, my schedule is gonna be so packed. <laughs> but, with, but with non-work related <laughs> yeah, stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just wanna go to the cinema. I just, like, I, I miss, <laughs> you can't even get popcorn. It's so sad. I know. They, they're like, they, you can't, you can go to the cinema All right. and you can sit next to other people now, but it, that the the reason, it used to be to socially distance with one seat. Yeah, yeah. Now right. you can sit next to each other, but the drawback is you're not allowed to have popcorn. Oh uh, no, then I'm not going. I, I, never, I, never buy, I never buy popcorn. It's yeah. the best part of the theater. <laughs> I, no, I hate it because like it's because like a, as you saw earlier, I go to the toilet all the free. Yeah, time. me too. So like when <coughs> I eat popcorn, I get thirsty, <laughs> so I have to drink. But then I have to go to the toilet, and I'm yeah. gonna miss some of the film. So I almost I've, I've learned my lesson now. Like I have the bladder of a five year old boy, so <laughs> I, I'm just gonna <laughs> not order. Little, little trade secret. So when we record trash taste, we have to take a break every thirty minutes to reset the cameras and. Me and Joey go to the toilet basically <laughs> every, time every time yeah. during the breaks because we have a very small bladder. Embarrassing, uh, embarrassing. <laughs> that's, and that's why I know now, it's just like, I'm just not gonna get popcorn anymore. Yeah, I, pop I love it. Like if, if, if I'm with someone and they have a bucket of popcorn, yeah, yeah I'm taking that shit. Popcorn's but the one food that I don't buy for myself, but when someone offers me it, <laughs> yeah, I oh, never I'll say no. Take it. I'll, I'll never, say never no. offer you my popcorn. <laughs> I wanna make that known, I'm eating all of that. <laughs> wow, rude. Uh, should we take a break every, I do actually need the toilet. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Customcast, an app available on iOS and Android devices that let you achieve your dreams of becoming a virtual, uh, Cute anime girls! Not what I was about to say, but yes. The custom cast app lets you create your own customizable virtual avatar. In the free basic version, you can create your own high quality 3D avatar in just a few minutes. You don't even need a phone number or a social media account to register. Hello gentlemen, Ada Ada. You can customize your avatar with many different hairstyles, clothes, background, body sizes, etc. You can always choose to be a kawaii anime girl like me and Gart. Or you can try and make your character look like you, but cooler. Like me. I can't get over how cute you look, Joey. I know, right? You kind of look like an older sister, God. And we're not related by blood. What the? 
Get out of here. Anyways, if you feel like going all out, you can also make in-app purchases to unlock tons of unique features. And if you want to use your avatar to stream, all you have to do is select the stream button on home and you're all set to make your VTuber debut. Your face will be detected by the virtual camera on your device and your virtual character will move based on your facial expressions and movements, such as tilting or turning your head. You too can become the waifu or husbando of your dreams since both girl and boy avatars can be created. So check the links in the description below to give the download and now i'm sad i'm gonna have to go back to my real persona for the rest of the show thank you for sponsoring this episode custom cast now back to the episode so like you talked before about you know the pressure of performing in japan because they expect perfection and we've talked before on this podcast by like idol culture in japan and how mm. they kind of expect perfection not only like on the stage but off the stage like as, as well person. yeah, you, yeah. You, you really get put on a pedestal here here it seems like What's it like in your position? Do you feel like you, you have the pressure to be like perfect in every aspect of your life or do you just not give a shit? Um, well, during, for example, like the concerts themselves are completely different, like I said. Um, Japanese audiences tend to uh, sort of enjoy the MC talking yeah. sections mm. a lot. And so they like to hear about like your private life and what you're doing and like they like to hear you talk. But then they, uh, for example, the overseas audience they just want to like have fun. do the music, <laughs> <laughs> play the anime opening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, I end up not talking much on stage when I go overseas. But um, right. yeah, I think in the Japanese industry though, they they have like they have exactly image of what kind of concert they want to do, and then you do that exact kind of concert, and then also the fans have like a very they like to Im like make you a character. Right, like, yeah. Mm, yeah. Kind of character sort of thing. So um it was it was kind of interesting though. Like I became a nano character in the beginning. And okay. um I tried to sort of live up to that expectation, but then I realized that, you know, it's kind of impossible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So little by little, like I'm becoming a lot more freedom and yeah. right now I'm just, you know, me, but have you ever had any uncomfortable situations arise from, you know, trying to be more yourself and the, the fans wanting this perfect image of you? Um, well, I did sort of think about like, oh, is this what sort of character Nana would do or say or not? You know, that kind of That's thing. That's weird because you, you are Nana. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, what, would, what would the fans think that I would do? I should do that. What, what, yeah. what is like the main difference between the character Nano and like you as just Nana? It was really sort of um, distinct because I didn't show my face in the beginning. Right. And right. So anything that sort of showed On like a personality. No, on stage um, no. I, I did, but um, in photos. Right, and right, so right, I right. never showed my face in photos and stuff. And so anything that sort of showed a characteristic of right. myself, mm -hmm. the human side of Nino. So so, so if, if I'm understanding this correctly, they created a character, not like, did they make a law around it or was it just how they perceived the way you would act off camera? Mm, well, it was kind of like my artist image as well. Oh, so my okay. director also wanted to go in a direction where I was, no, not too open. I was more mysterious. Right. Yeah, yeah. And who's Nano? You know, yeah. is, is 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 are they a boy or a girl? I don't Japanese know. audiences love that shit. Don't they? they love <laughs> well, like the mysterious it's because characters. you can then apply, you know, based off the music and yeah. the performances. Yeah, yeah. You can think like, oh, I think they're like this, and they must be like this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. actually, it did help me focus on my music more. Yeah. Mm. Because I didn't have to um, think about you know what I looked like, what you know my image was like. I could just focus on my music and mm. not you know focus on the other aspects of the visual yeah. aspects. Yeah, because I, I feel like a lot of people forget that in the music industry, sometimes a lot of like image is just as important as the music as well. So being able to focus on the music, mm -hmm. I feel is a big advantage because you can, that, that just means you can just focus on what you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's always like, you know, they always think that, you know, people on like, uh, an X Factor and what's yeah. the American Idol. American Idol. Because they're too humanized mm -hmm. to us and that we see them way too similar to ourselves. Mm -hmm. They don't almost, they don't work very well as pop stars because mm -hmm. they're not larger than life mm -hmm. characters. Yeah. So I feel like in almost some aspects, you kind of have to like not tell everyone about everything about yourself because mm -hmm. they're going to think like, oh, well, I know everything about Nana. She's like a normal, normal everyday person. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. it's like, Nana, oh my God, mysterious person who's amazing at music. It's like, yeah. Perhaps like gonna, now that I'm look. completely myself. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, my fantasy the, is ruined. The facade is gone. We are breaking the fourth wall now. 
<laughs> yeah, like I, I saw like it, it's very similar to like um I read like this article on uh how w- the reason why Daft Punk uh hides their faces now. Yeah. It's because like yeah, it's exactly the same thing. It's like they just want to like completely focus on the music. They want to like do, basically cut off the connection between the person making the music and the actual music. So yeah. now the two members of Daft Punk, they can do whatever the fuck they want in their personal life they, and no one can say anything otherwise, right? So. They, could, they could be at their own concert in the crowd and no one would actually right. know. But that was so convenient because I could go anywhere and do anything without people realizing who I was. Right, right. So I could, you know, go to the convenience store in my pajamas and be like, hoo hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you do that when, when you had your face oh, in? Oh, definitely. I still <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been noticed or like recognized in Japan? Actually, no, I haven't. Really? Wow. What so. if you have, but they just didn't come to you? Yeah. <laughs> what if they're like all <laughs> Japanese, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, From a distance. On my Wikipedia, is it, does it say that? <laughs> no, 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 does no. Does it say that I go to convenience stores in my pajamas? <laughs> it does Nana now. was spotted on so, so and so date in her pajamas at a family mart. <laughs> was yeah, there a TMZ that does that now? Yeah, is, there, is there like a Japanese TMZ? Or oh, fuck, I don't know. It's just, Have you just seen like the YouTuber TMZ? <laughs> Like, what's there's, the YouTuber TMZ? Like YouTuber TMZ. Oh no, it's I have really, seen that. It's really creepy. They like follow like the 13 oh, year old. filter, right? Something like that. Something they like just, that. They like know. stalk like the 13, 14 year old TikTok stars and just yeah. ask them questions. It's like, what are you, what are you, they're like- But it's mostly, it's, most, it's mostly in LA, right? Yeah, it's, just, uh, it's LA. Yeah, because I, I see some of those, you know, TMZ YouTubers now and I, I, I get this image that just, LA YouTubers LA live on a different planet. planet. I, yeah. LA just works differently from the rest of the world. I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> But I spent so much time, um, you know, not having an identity. Mm. Yeah. So for like years and years, mm. I spent doing music just, you know, without an identity. So now that I ha- do have an identity and I'm more free now, sometimes I don't know who I am. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know, lost at that point. But um, Yo, this is getting pretty deep. Well, but yeah, no, I, 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 I totally get it though. It, it's like, you know, it is a very uncomfortable thing where you're like, hmm, am I the character that people think I am? Or yeah. am I the What me? is, because- no, no. <laughs> oh, This is stressful. Because I I, I've, well. I've, I've, I've experienced like something similar doing YouTube where I, I don't know if my personal, because my personal personality has shifted in like the 10 years I've done YouTube, but have I shifted because I've done YouTube or have I, you know, have I shifted because of my own personal reasons? I don't know. The, mm. the way I try and like tell people, at least I think I tell myself this to like, this is right, right? Like, like I, I think I present like an image of myself that is like me on my best days, right? Mm. It's, you know, cause mm. obviously, you know, you get sad. You get, you, you get get those days where you don't want to do anything and you're a little you not show fun. You're yeah. Yeah, you show your humans. Yeah, you're not fun to be around. Yeah. And obviously I'm not going to show that, but then it's yeah. like, am I lying by not showing that? Like, I don't know, I exactly. hate this. Mm. It's so uncomfortable. Cause I, I, I feel like that when there's a camera, I feel like I have to be in like the good mode, the entertaining mode where sometimes, you know, you just don't feel like being entertaining or talking. Um, I just with- got to like take the smile pill, right? And just be <laughs> like, yep, I'm, I'm on camera now, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's tough, like, and I, and I feel like, you know, I, I can completely see why, like, you know, especially on the YouTuber side, right? Like why there has kind yeah. of been this like kind of, I've almost seen as like a, a growing thing of faceless YouTubers, just because yeah. I think people are starting to realize the kind of, not risk per se, but you know, the, the demerits to like showing your face and showing your self on it's, camera. It, it's right? way more pressure. And yeah. I've noticed that since, because I, I started off with most people not knowing much about me right. and then trash taste started. <laughs> and now I'm on camera every week and yeah, it's something yeah, that yeah. I just haven't been used to I'm at just all. lazy. I just can't be bothered going through all the effort of like hiding my identity. But you know, so, like you know. I said earlier though, I think the Japanese industry, like that, the entertainment know. industry used to be very sort of strict and they expected you to sort of portray an artist image and mm-hmm. yeah. so like idols and- Like it was a, you know. it would be, it'd be a huge scandal, right? If they were exactly. dating someone. Yeah, right? yeah. But um, thanks to YouTube and like this recent sort of generation, um, you know, a lot of musicians and uh, entertainers are starting to become YouTubers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a huge plus because they're realizing that they can be themselves more and still work. And be right. human. Yeah, right? and be human. And people are actually looking for that now. Yeah, and so this is a huge, uh, big sort of uh, you know plus for the entertainment industry, and I think it's a good change for us. And mm. I feel it's a chance for us to be more of ourselves and to really um, put out you know our own messages into our work. Did you have any control over your own like artist image, or was Not that in all the beginning? Um, this is my first time actually talking about this, and I would love to talk about it. Actually, oh, okay, exclusive. Let's go. Exclusive. Let's go. <laughs> 
No, but everything in the beginning of my uh, career, because I was completely an amateur. Mm, I wasn't right. like usually rock artists start doing their stuff before their debut. Like、mm. they do small lives, venues, yeah, they tours. Right, right. They have a fan base. But for me, like day one that my fans.、Uh, You know, made a debut with me was my day one as well. Right. And I didn't do lives before that. I didn't have media coverage, anything out there. So it was just Nico Nico. And so、um, I needed aid. I needed direction. Yeah. And so、um, my director and made sort of this image of who, what kind of artist I should be. And I tried to sort of、um, be, be that to、right. said that I could.、Mm. So in the beginning, though. Um, everything was completely like, you know,、um, decided for you. Yes, decided for me. And I didn't even know what I wanted yet as a musician. Yeah. So I couldn't say, you know, hey, I want to do this. I want to, I just wanted to sing. That's yeah, all right, I right. To do. And that's how it normally is. Artists、yeah. just kind of, <clears throat> a lot of things I notice about artists is that they just want to focus on the art and they have no idea about how to market themselves、so、or branding.、Really、helped me to have the direction. Right. And to be told, like, you know, Um, everything other than the singing part to do how to do this, how to do that. They taught me about the entertainment industry. They taught me how to do lives. They taught me how to take artist photographs. You know, they, they taught me everything. God, I wish I knew that. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, we just kind of had to like learn on the job and take an array of the most awkward photos that have ever、yeah. been taken. In the beginning, it was so sad because I didn't show my face, but I had to take artist photographs. I was always wearing a hood. Right, yeah. And yeah. so I was like standing in front of the camera wearing a hood and not showing my face. And I was like, you know, this could be anyone else. Could anyone else could yeah. Be yeah. A mannequin and no one would notice. <laughs> yeah, right. Does it have to be me? You know, and that kind of thing. And even in my promotion videos, I didn't show my face. And so my neck was always like this. And by the end of the video, I'd, I'd be like, oh, my neck. <laughs> <laughs> my neck. <laughs> so, you know, that, that happened behind the cameras. And there were a lot of things that were difficult in the beginning. Right. But now that I think about it, it was really funny. It was, it, it was really <laughs> funny and fun. And it helped me learn about a lot of things.、Mm. Did, you have to, did you ever have to that point where you had to like work on your signature? Or did you have a good looking signature to begin with when you signed? Things.、Um, I just use, I still use to this day、uh, just a regular like cursive signature. I'm so I, jealous. <laughs> I, I literally just do like four circles and I'm like, bam, one out of two. I would love to have a cool looking signature, but I don't know how to do it because I never. I think Joey, out of all of us, has the coolest looking signature, which is hilarious because I came up that really, signature. Show me your signature. My signature?、Um, do we have like a thing? Because,、yeah. like, I came up with my signature, I think, in like, it was the first con I ever went to. It was、yeah. basically the first time I ever had to sign something. Like,、yeah. someone came up to me and was like, And you made up, man, man, I love your work. Can you, can you sign something? And I'm like, What? Who the, who the fuck wants a signature from me? You made that up on the spot. I made that up on the spot, and I was like, You know what? Good enough. This, this, is, this is just going to be my signature for the rest of my life. Because while Joey's doing his signature, because I remember the first time I got asked to do my signature, I looked like a deer in. I look like a lost deer in headlights. Look at that. That's. That's, that's my signature. That looks cool. That、that's、looks like、bad. a proper artist signature. I could sell that on Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally I was like, okay, what is like a distinct thing about a signature? Lots of like unnecessarily long lines, lots、right. of like over to the point where it needs to be illegible, basically.、Yeah. Let me like, show you how it's done, Joe. Okay, okay. Show so、you. show me your signature. Yeah,、uh, my, mine's, mine's, mine, I think, is in between and the I, middle. And of I was、those. like, okay, I can't just like write the anime, man. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see that you probably came up with that in, in, in first grade. Like, <laughs> that seems like this. That looks like C. 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 Dan. Yeah, C. Dan. Am I looking at Rorschach image here? Listen, you think when Picasso was in the museum, he had to put up. This shit, listen, let me explain, right?、Okay. You have the C, the、yeah. D, and then I just do whatever. So, it's always like I do the C and D and I give up.、So、this is this is like, you、and、know. Your okay, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like when the kid brings back a drawing. As well. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is like when the kid brings back a drawing to their parents when they're like three or something and the parents have to act impressed. <laughs> like, oh, you did this? <laughs> oh, it looks so good. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just like, when I, put it on the when fridge. I'm, I when I'm signing the packages in Japan, they'll be like, oh, full signature, please. And I'm like, oh, of course, of course. Then I just do that. And they're like, they look at me like, what was that? That wasn't full signature. <laughs> That's mine. It's not as good as Joey's, but. That's pretty clean. That's pretty it's, clean. It's okay. Hold it up to the yeah, camera. Yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. It's yeah, okay. See, it's I not can、bad. read that and be like, yeah, that clearly says gear. I look、right. at this and I'm like, who's Dan? <laughs> Honestly, I, this, this is cleaned up a this, lot because. I've got a unique one every time. This is bullshit. You can, why would I want this? I, I thought, this. I thought, the, do one yours thing, while we're I thought、okay. the one thing that differentiates between like a regular signature and an artist signature is like they have some kind of like thing in it. Yeah, see, that's clean. That looks good. That looks good. 
But you know, I'm actually looking <laughs> wait, wait, for- Wait, wait, put it up to the camera. Put it up to the camera. Yeah, see, that's clean. Yeah. No, I'm actually looking for a new signature. Right. So right. you guys can think of one for me. <laughs> I mean, I- I got you, So like, wait. Who, so who, I need who, a, which kind of style so do you like the most? One, one hint I need is a lot of like- a lot of squiggles. I like oh, the squiggles. A lot of pointless lines, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of equals higher IQ. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. But a my name is pretty uh, <laughs> difficult to do that. With. <laughs> I mean, just go as cursive as you can. You're like, this is so, put, yeah, put, I, put I on go, put on the top hat and the monocle. You know, it's, I go for the doctor. I, no I kind of like this. Yeah, right. Maybe see, I see. Yeah, I kind of like, like see Dan. It's my see point. Dan. See Dan. See Dan. Pointing at the the my signature. By the way, can we get that on the record? <laughs> yeah, I kind of like this one. Yeah. So no. maybe I'll just like get rid of the O. Yeah. Right. Just go C N. Yeah. C N. It's more C, I think. I like that. That's good. That looks like that looks like it says Chon. Chen. 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 Oh uh, yeah, it's my favorite artist. I'll have to ask my staff though if this passes for the. Do you have to get Do you get your signature approved by your staff? Uh, not usually, but in this case, probably. <laughs> what is this bad? It's like, oh God, it's I, I gotta ask, have you guys ever had a fan ask you to redo a signature? Yeah, oh yeah, I have. I, Cause I, I've, I've had that before. <laughs> and that's why, because my signature looks a lot better than it used to, because yeah. before it used to look something like this. And I, I, I remember I put, I put this on like, on like a guy's shirt because yeah. he wanted me to sign a shirt and he dead ass looks at that. <laughs> and like, he was like, can you do that again, please? <laughs> I can't read that. <laughs> I, I, I got a good one for you. Can I have the pen? All right. So I was at a bar with a friend in the middle of nowhere in Japan. And for some reason he thought it'd be entertaining to tell the, the person at the bar that I was a YouTuber. I, I normally don't want to do that. I, I hate like, it when they do because that. It's just, it's just like, you're not going to get it if I show you and you, you're not, you're only going to be impressed by the numbers and not what yeah, it actually yeah, is, yeah. right? So it's like, don't do not do it. So he does it anyway. So I'm like quite drunk and they're like, can you please, for some reason they brought out a shiki shit at like 2 AM. And I'm already, I'm already pretty, I'm pretty drunk. So <laughs> they hand it to me and I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to n do this, Yeah. right? So all I do in the end is just this. <laughs> I do this. <laughs> And they were like, whoa! And I'm like, looking at my friend, I'm like, I can't believe they're taking that. And they put, they hung it up on the wall in really? front of me. And I doubt it's still there. They must have taken that down. So, Well, well it's like the signature that we did uh, at, uh, at Ami Ami, right? In Akihabara. Like, like Ami Ami is like a, like a, a figurine store yeah. in Akihabara. Yeah. It's like one of the biggest ones. And it, at one part of this store, they have this, just this massive line of like, maybe like 50 shikishis from like artists and like figurine, uh, like sculptors and stuff like, like that. Like pro proper mangakas. Proper mangakas and, and stuff like that. And we, and we did there. a video there and they were like, hey, can you sign a shikishi for us? Cause you filmed here. And I didn't take into account. I didn't actually think they were gonna hang it up next to all I of these like amazing looking shikishis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So we were just like, fuck it. Let's just, let's just do it. Like they're probably, gonna, they're probably just saying this to be nice. Let's just do it. Turns out I went back like a week later. It's up there oh, on no. the wall next to these incredible looking skishies <laughs> and it just looks like absolute dog shit. <laughs> like fuck, we should have- uh, It's the macaroni art next to like the Banksy. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's pretty It's pretty appalling. I was like, fuck, it was the first time ever I was like, fuck, I, I wish they'd just take that down. Yeah, like, I don't it, want this clout. It's like, it's like that horse meme where you have like a really professionally drawn horse and then the last third is just like a kid's drawing. <laughs> That, was, that that's that that's our drawing in Army Army. But uh, every time someone goes there now, they take a picture and they tag take us. A picture and they tweet it at us, and we're like, please don't remind <laughs> and us. Just the shame just gets more every time. Like, yeah. like Japanese artists have such amazing um, signatures, mm. like, right. and they're all good at drawing. Mm. And so I've always felt like that's a huge like complex for me. Is yeah. like, why are why is everyone so good at like autographs? <laughs> yeah, but a signature. I is think there a class? <laughs> that's, that's, why, that, that, that's why I was genuinely curious. Do you guys practice this shit? Cause I had to make mine up on the spot. Yeah. That's why mine looks complete I've ass. I've never um, like just practiced or like- yeah, I'm you still know, trying to figure I, that out. Yeah. 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 Because, because I feel like when we all like first had to do signatures, right? Like it kind of yeah. came out of the blue. Like you weren't expecting I, it. I yeah. feel like a signature shouldn't be a burden. And when I ask a Japanese person to do a signature, it's like, right, give me 15 minutes and a, and a Red Bull and I'll, I'll be done. It's yeah. like, no, 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 no. It's just, you can just do like some swiggles. I don't care, yeah. just slap it. I don't know what, just, I feel bad when they're drawing something really delicate. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is just gonna like 
be in like my oh, wall somewhere. I, yeah. I, I, I think the highest pressure for me is signing a shikishi. Cause a shikishi, there's a lot of white space in the shikishi. Yeah. <laughs> and there's only so many ways I can make it look good. So like it's when, when I have to draw my signature big, it's like it's like enlarging a uh, 100 by 100 pixel image. You know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's like Minecraft quality that we're talking about. It's like 360 YouTube. <laughs> And it just looks bad. Yeah, because we're so used to doing like the corner of an anime poster so that it doesn't <laughs> exactly, go over it, right? right, right. So, yeah. so I, I, you know, ever since I made a debut um, in Japan, like I've had to uh, have, you know, shikishi signatures mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. And I, one, one advice from me is how to fill it up is just draw a lot of stars. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, stars. Like that's why my shikishi is always full of stars because I don't yeah. know what to do with the white space. <laughs> yeah, but that's the problem, right? Is that like we have three people who just cannot draw to save their life. Yeah. Right? So it's just like same here. Do same I like here. draw an anime character? But I don't want to get like deviant art quality like anime character next to my signature. So it's like what do I? So that's why like at least with my signature, my one saving grace was just like the cat face. Just been like, I have to add something to this to make it unique. And one thing I've always found with like Japanese artists or like just voice actors or whoever is that they always have like the mark of like identity. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what's it for me? I'll just put a fucking cat face I think on. the reason like Japanese artists and and um, entertainers like have sort of artwork with their signatures is because they have to sign Skishi and they have to fill up the white space. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Basically just put a cat face or make up an emoji apparently. Yeah, or just, just or a star. Or, or just lots of something. Lots yeah. of stars. This is a problem that 99% of viewers will have zero relationship <laughs> with. <laughs> really is. relatable topic. Yeah. Yeah. First world problems. <laughs> So, so you grew up in the US yes, your whole life. Exactly. When did you come to Japan for the first time? Um, I, I've i been coming back to Japan um, like pretty much every year when I was little. Just, With your parents, you know, right, yeah. Just to go to my um, grandparents' house and stuff. And then I went to, uh, I came to Japan in middle school um, and I experienced Japanese school education oh, wow. for the first right. time in my life. How was that going from hell. American school? Hell? <laughs> hell. Wait, why? <laughs> um, it was complete hell for me because um, even though I can speak regular sort of everyday Japanese, I yeah. couldn't read or write um, up to par. Mm. It is, I mean, am I allowed to ask this, but why were you going to school in Japan? Like what was there well, a reason that's why? that's the music thing. Oh, okay. um, oh, I okay. wanted to become oh. a musician in Japan. So I came to Japan to do music and I still had to go to school. So I went to school, but I went to regular school, which was a huge mistake. And I didn't go to international school or, you know, right. that kind of thing. So <laughs> how was that? Why, why, why was it a mistake? I'm curious. Um, it's just that I couldn't keep up with any of the education right. and I was a complete loner. So yeah. I didn't I, have any friends. I was gonna ask, is it is it hard to make friends when you're like a transfer student? I think it's impossible to make friends. <laughs> this is such a lie. I don't know would have you believe that the transfer yeah, student yeah, is like, like every, like all the everyone the wants student. everyone wants to know the transfer student. Why would you lie to me, anime? <laughs> because like there's that one scene where it's like a transfer student from overseas who's like, oh, they can speak English. And then during the break, they're fucking all over that transfer student, right? Like, did that happen to you at all? Um, big surprise here. And, I, and I'm gonna give you a huge uh, sort of reality check, but as right. an anime singer, um, anime is not exactly real. <laughs> <laughs> no! I respect your opinion. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna live in my anime <laughs> reality. <laughs> I will choose to- No, I hate to break break it to you guys, but no. No, so but yeah. You mean you didn't sit in like the far corner of the classroom next to the window? <laughs> um, I was, you know, well, actually, you know, since I came to Japan and then I started um, the school, at a very weird time in the sort of year. Right. So I was like in the corner and so I couldn't make friends and I couldn't keep up with the studies and I, everything like the culture was completely. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's quite I, different from America. Yeah. I guess for you as well, it's like doubly a pressure, right? Because you're full Japanese. Everyone so. expects me so to you, be Japanese. Right. Like, uh, you know, if I looked sort of American, probably yeah. people would be like, you know, uh, Nihongo daijoubu desu ka? Yeah. <laughs> but no, people would be like completely normal. You know, mm. they expect me to understand completely everything. So yeah. that was huge sort of stress for me mentally. Did you, how good was your Japanese when you moved here? Um, I could speak it, but l reading and writing was completely- So Japanese yeah. is technically your second language. Yes, it's technically oh, my wow. second language. And I didn't like actually officially study Japanese in America. Right. Okay. So. And so you were in Japanese school until high school then? Like, no, just uh, for 
less than two years, I think. Because so. you were like, thank God. <laughs> get, get, get no, like, and then I just gave up. And then I went back to the States and right. then I finished school there. Right. And then after okay. I finished school, I came to Japan and started my career. So. Okay. What is the Japanese education system like compared to the US? Because I, I've, I've thought about like, you know, if because I was also, you know, I was raised in the UK. That was where my education system is. I can't imagine having an education in Asia because that, that the culture of the Asian education system just seems like a lot of pressure. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that I'm not a fan of at all. Um, I think, you know, in, the, in Japan, um, I, I've only been as a student for two, less than two years. Yeah. So I can't say I know everything, but at the same time, I think they're very like, like studying based. Like everything is about uh, studying, studying, studying. And it's very difficult um, to be a loner in school in Japan. Like it's, you have to have your sort of niche and you have to have your place and you have to have friends in order mm. to really um, feel like. So, so, so yeah, who are like the cool kids in Japanese schools? Who are like the popular kids? Cause in like, when I was growing up, it would be like the people who are good at sports or like the jocks uh, and stuff like that. Who, who is like, who are like the pop, what makes you popular in Japanese schools? I've always wondered about. I think it is different in Japan. Like, um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean like uh, you have to be like the most fashionable or anything. But in Japan, it's more if you're outgoing and you're also smart. Right. Smart educationally. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I, I think anime got right. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed there's a big difference because when I was growing up in the UK, if you did well in tests, that's like a that's, that's like a bullied. that's like a black mark. You're like, whoa, you studied for an exam. Look at this fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas in Japan, it's like, whoa, you studied? Oh my God, you're awesome. <laughs> so I think, you know, that kind of thing is different. Yeah. Um, like if you're an all rounder, if you're good at a lot of different things then you're pretty much, you know- in The image of perfection. Yeah, basically. You're just good at everything. You're like just good at everything. Japan, Japan loves perfection. Yeah, so yeah. I think they sort of exert perfection in the anime as well. Like the mm. anime is, uh, they sort of um, depict perfection in animation. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, you, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to. But uh, did you ever have like any negative experiences, like bullying, because you were f like foreign or? Um, there wasn't exactly like direct bullying, but people didn't know how to interact with me because they because it wasn't international school and they weren't exposed to foreign mm. people. They mm. at, at at the time though e now of course there are a lot of foreigners in Japan, but mm. at the time yeah. there were like if there was a foreigner walking around in Shibuya, people would be like. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's still like that in some cases. They right? didn't have an immune system for like English and mm, foreigners. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just the fact that I came from the US and that I was an outsider, people were like, oh, I don't know how to interact with them. You know, <laughs> do they know the same language? You know? yeah. They didn't really know how to interact with me. So uh, even though I was really outgoing and a lot, I'm a people lover. Yeah. Um, no, no one really wanted to, you know, sort of interact with me like directly. Yeah. They were very yeah. shy. Yeah. Japan is very shy. So yeah. um, that was one of the biggest stresses. Yeah, for me. I definitely noticed that, especially recently, I feel even just like looking like, you know, going out into the town and stuff like that, you do see like, yeah, because like when we were in school, like I never went to a Japanese school either because I just didn't really want to. I heard terrible things about it. Um, but you know, back then it was like, yeah, if you're a, if you if you look any different at all, because it's such a collectivist society, you're yeah. just not gonna fit in. Like no matter mm. how hard you try, so I'm like, I'm not even gonna bother with that shit. But like nowadays, like you know, the other day I saw like a bunch of high school girls in uniform. And among like the three or four Japanese girls, there was like one girl who was just like clearly like African-American, like black. Yeah. So it's like full on. And I was, and they were like just hanging out with her. Like it was nothing. And I'm in my head. I was just like, hell yeah. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, exactly. like kids actually like are starting to understand it in Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you guys took your fucking time. Yeah. So if I came to Japan now as yeah. a teenager and went to school, I'd probably have a very a much better time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. So, definitely. You know, yeah. This video is sponsored by Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is a premium men's essentials brand that believes in smart designs and high quality fabrics and offers a one-stop shop for men's basics. 
Hell yeah, they do. After taking a brief hiatus from outdoor activities and workout routines, it's time to get back to the grind with new spring essentials from Mac Weldon. With body mapping technology and fabric mesh zones. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are those? Well, let me tell you, Gon. Mac Weldon's stealth boxer briefs, uh, I do actually own them. They are just in the wash. Because I that run the ones them. that I'm wearing? Those are not the stealths, Jerry. You would know the stealths if you actually worked out as hard as I do, because they are so goddamn comfortable. <laughs> they don't smell, they're amazing. They're perfect for everyday wear or to be layered underneath workout gear like this smelly bastard. And for the sweatpants <laughs> you can wear outside without feeling like you're wearing sweatpants at all. Check out Mac Weldon's new ace line. Socks, shirt, hoodies, underwear, polos, or active shorts, Mac Weldon promises comfort and a consistent fit. And it also looks great and feels great from working out, going out, going to work, or on a date. Mac Weldon is for everyday life. With a wide range of customized fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. And with the Weldon Blue totally free loyalty program, level Damn. one gets you free shipping for life. Damn, that is insane. That's a long ass time. And once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. And don't forget about the Mac Weldon guarantee. Oh God, I didn't. They forget. want you to be comfortable mm. for you. So you know what? Mm. If you mm. don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them and they'll still refund you. I because... just might. So for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash trash taste and enter the promo code trash taste. That's MacWeldon.com slash trash taste, promo code trash taste for 20% off. Mac Weldon reinventing men's basic. Back to the episode. No, because I feel like it's extra pressure as well because I I, I kind of relate to that where like, I, I feel like if you were like American or something or, or you know, so, something that, you know, your your blood isn't from Japan, um, it would be a lot more exotic. But because you're 100% Japanese, coming back to Japan, you feel like a foreigner in your own home sometimes. Because I, like, I felt like that when I went back to Thailand, mm. right? Because, you know, Every, people like foreigners in Thailand, but for me, I'm a, I feel like I'm a foreigner in Thailand, but it's kind of like a disappointment because I'm 100% Thai, mm. but so they expect me to be fully Thai and right. fully fluent mm. and fully understanding of the culture and everything. But, and when they see that I'm not, they're just like, ah, okay. So you're not one of us, but you're also not cool for being a foreigner either. <laughs> it's like double disappointment. Yeah, I, I, I don't get the advantage of being either thing. Yeah. This Thai man would never wear a turtle now. What is this? But I can completely relate because I grew up in America, but I, I lived on the West Coast right. um, for most of my life. And so there were very few Asian people. Mm. And at the time though, um, Jap the Japanese boom wasn't, yeah. Existent yet. Yeah. So no one really liked Japan yet. Everyone was like, a the Asian people were all one category. It was yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. You're Chinese, you're Japanese, you're the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And so I felt very like, uh, sort of, you know, left out in the community. Mm. I didn't know my identity there. And so and then I came to Japan and then I experienced the same thing where I didn't have an identity. I wasn't completely Japanese, I wasn't completely American. And yeah. people were still not. Um, used to having you know foreign people in Japan yet, mm. and so my timing is just completely off my entire life. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like I mean, when I was growing up in school, like I was, a, I swear, the only guy I was interested in like any Asian culture, mm. and yeah. it felt really weird because like and no one gave a shit. Everyone just cared about mm -hmm. like the football that was on. Mm. Yeah, was like, ah, cool, cool. I mean, uh, but like now it's almost like you know, there's almost a like a fetishization of like Japanese culture. Exactly. People love Japanese. Yeah. Culture. So if I if I grew up in the states during now. I'd Bruh. be like, I feel like I was grow I grew up in the wrong era. Because <laughs> yeah. like exactly. kids, kids now find anime. Did you really just say that? <laughs> no, 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 because like kids now find anime cool and shit, and I'm just like, bruh. Where, where were all these kids when I was right. like, like secretly we watching anime? Up, yeah, when we were growing up, you get bullied for watching Dragon Ball Z, but yeah. now you get bullied for only watching Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, you only watch Dragon we Ball Z? We can talk about this for another two hours. <laughs> <laughs> like we can make another YouTube video just for this <laughs> topic. This is an important topic. Yeah, honestly, because it's like, cause I felt that way too, like in Australia, because I was the only kid with any kind of Asian blood in him. Like yeah. I don't look Asian, mm -hmm. yeah. but when you're in a school that is 99.9% .9 white, even that 1% of Asian look sticks out like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I had the exact same thing over here. Like I don't look Japanese at all. So when people fuck, you know, when I would say konnichiwa, they'd fucking Nihongo Jozu me in this. And I'm like, it's not hard to say konnichiwa, bro. Like I can say <laughs> I so still, much more, like <laughs> but you're, you're, I can say so much more, but you don't even give me the opportunity to, give that to you. Yeah. So it was like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah, it's, it's funny how times have changed because I remember talking to my cousin 
uh, who so uh, who has a son who's going to school now, mm. and he's really into sports. He's like he's like a super jock, basically, mm. S- kind of like super the jock. No, kind of kind of like the opposite <laughs> giga, of me. Giga jock, <laughs> a giga jock, basically. <laughs> but I remember she was telling me about how he got bullied in school, right? Because oh, he didn't being a jock. No, no, yeah, for being a jock because he didn't play Fortnite. So <laughs> this, so. That's so funny. <laughs> my mum was telling me the same thing. So my, yeah, my younger- Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my younger nephew, he got bullied for not playing Fortnite. So one day he decides to play Fortnite and then he still got bullied because he had the Bad default way. skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my mum works in a primary school, like kids for like, I don't know, age of six and 12. She was telling me that these the kids were getting bullied because they didn't have any skins in Fortnite as well. <laughs> And, and I'm I was, just like- I was like, cause when I, when I was growing up, oh my like God. when I was that age, it was always the kid who was the fastest. Yeah. He was like the coolest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But when I actually became the fastest kid, it wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, you know, I was always good at video games and I got bullied for playing video games. But now I would have been like, I'd have been so cool in school, man. I yeah. was so good at video games. We <laughs> all go through that thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Chasing, you know, the the trend and trying to be no, no, cool. no, no. We were ahead of the generation. Yeah, yeah. yeah we you were you were so fast that you out you outran. The yeah, I quickly exactly. I quickly realized I'm like fuck everyone else. I I, I like what I like. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do what I want. We set the trend now. <laughs> <laughs> we the trend. We we the trend uh, now. Yeah, I'm I'm curious because, uh, like I said earlier, about like people loving Japan now. Mm-hmm. What do you think about people who like like? think of Japan as a utopia, like this kind of perfect society. Cause people give me shit when I say like bad things about Japan. Like if you don't like it, just leave. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just British. I just complain about everything. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I find it very interesting. Like, uh, like what is so great? You know, it's not that Japan has changed so much recently. Mm. It's just that suddenly it's become a utopia. So yeah. um, I just think that Japan is very unique in mm. even in Asia, like mm. and there are a lot of things that Japan does originally, like, you know, anime and J-rock and J-pop and all these uh, culture things that Japan originally did that is now um, widespread in the world. So mm. um, it's not that Japan has changed or anything. It's just that um, j- those little things are being noticed. In I, the guess, world, I guess it's so. just like, it's more so just like the more, like it's more exposure to like over glorification. Mm-hmm. Of yeah. like, because so. because now we know that Japan does all of these like unique things that are very different to Western countries. It's suddenly better, quote unquote. Yeah. Like, you know, like, just, yeah, of course, like there are a lot of things about Japan that are just more like, I don't know what is so, I mean, I, I love matcha, but I don't whole, know yeah. what is so like <laughs> heavenly I, about matcha. Uh, like, do you like matcha? I, I do, but I do. I understand that it's good, but I don't know why. In America, in America right? especially, they treat matcha like a brand of cocaine. No, exactly. no, no, Japan does too. Japan has matcha everything. I'm pretty sure there's like matcha toilet roll that you can eat. No, in, no, but but you know no, what but what I'm saying ridiculous. is that there's in America, so there are matcha. so many things in America, like so many, like even, if it's, Japan. even if it's a hint no. of Asian, they're just like, yeah, we gotta have matcha something. No, there's, no, there's no, more it, matcha it, in Japan. It, it, I mean, well, there yeah, is of course there, there is more matcha there. in Japan, there's but too much matcha. but it's Why like like the, what's up with that? the the way the matcha is like um, well, marketed towards like the Americans is like this exotic thing. Yeah. This is, it's a unique taste like, because matcha is like an official frappuccino taste. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah like yeah. around the world. Yeah, yeah around matcha. the world. Oh, so. I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't get frappuccinos gone. I'm the only one out of the three of us that will get a frappuccino. Because <laughs> you, you've turned more white yeah. since you've moved to Japan, yeah. Connor. I, I, what it is gone? It is what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that. Globally, the world likes green stuff, like wasabi, it's green. <laughs> it's like green uh, matcha, stuff. it's green. So if it's green, it's probably Puke gonna- green. Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> is that just it? Is that what it comes down to? <laughs> that's the only reason that I can come up with. Green tea. I mean, I mean that's kind of just matcha, isn't that's it? That's all matcha is, it's just tea. It's just green, it's just green stuff. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm gonna say, I think matcha slaps and I'll, I'll be the one in the corner who will defend no, matcha. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I like matcha. No, matcha is good. Matcha is yeah. good. But Fuck's sake, it shouldn't be like, like, <laughs> it shouldn't be like soul. Like, like <laughs> this guy's like an anti matcha, I swear. Like, just always, always Connor's always just like, finally, someone who, so, somewhere I belong. Oh no, oh, never, not, mind. never mind. Yeah. my side there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so matcha is just uh, like the tip of the iceberg, but there are so many things about Japan are being discovered mm. and are being like utopiaized. So like- Bidets, yeah. bidets should be. Yeah. I, no, they're, yeah, they're exactly. There are some, there are a lot of things about Japan and Japanese culture that I think rightfully so should be put yeah. up on a pedestal. Like bidets, for example, right? Like, 
I mean, fuck. You experience a bidet, your life has basically changed for the better. I, as we discussed in an earlier episode. Heated toilet seats. Heated That's toilet seats. I, 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 Japan has normalized heated what, toilet what are seats. What some great things about Japan that you find really like amazing? I would like to know about that. Okay, for me, personally coming from Sydney, mm -hmm. uh, Sydney has one of the worst fucking public transport systems in the world. Mm. Like it, it's, I've discussed it in a podcast before, but like just having, coming to Japan and being like, okay, the, tr the schedule says the train's coming at exactly 2.57. And the fact that I can go to the platform at 2.56 and the train arrives exactly one minute later is like, if, the, if it came on time in, in Australia, you'd think something was wrong. <laughs> you'd, th you'd think the bus driver had like a gun to his head being like, <laughs> arrive here on time. Cause otherwise it just never comes on time. So. Yeah, I, uh, th there's, there's two sides of Japan for me because mm -hmm. I love the convenience of Japan, but there's two th there's two sides of the convenience because there's one there's the daily living mm -hmm. because just living in Japan just the daily side daily living side of Japan it's so convenient it's so easy and then there's the business side of Japan which <laughs> is like the exact opposite yeah. of convenience so sure, I sure. but like just living here I I feel like I get the best the best of the best of Japan because I'm self employed so mm. it's it's way more convenient just to live here it drives me insane the put like how intensely they'll pursue politeness here like mm. to a point where it makes everyone's life inconvenient like as Gump saying about business they'll 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 keep th people in the chain and of the business that shouldn't be in the chain mm -hmm. like there'll be middlemen in everything mm -hmm. just out of like courtesy and there's a point where I'm just like, come on, this is ridiculous. Like we can talk to about it ourselves. Like, no, no, you have to go through like, the five middlemen to, who introduced it's each like, other. Bro, do I really need to get approval from the boss's boss to just yeah, go get some yeah. lunch? Yeah. Like, I just, I just, I just want to go. Yeah, I mean, I, but I mean, the things I love, uh, I like the safety, you know? Oh uh, yeah. Living in London is kind of sketch at times. Mm. Oh, dude, yeah. I, I, speaking of sketch, we've got to talk about America, right? Like, <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah, New York to Tokyo has to be like yes. world apart. And yeah. then also, you know, being from the UK, we're not known for our culinary <laughs> excellence. Um, so it's nice having food that tastes good all the time. Mm. At, at a reasonable price. But I'm scared because, you know, I'd, I was very good at eating just like potato, being like, oh, this is amazing, isn't it? Just a potato. Exactly. Then now, then when you come to Japan, yeah. you become really like gourmet. Yeah, like, no, no. You, you expect everything to taste good and you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, to me, yeah. pizza was anything with cheese, bread, and tomato. Exactly. And, and I was and pretty oil. happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Butter, I was, anything I was happy. with butter, cheese on it is good. And then, yeah, now it's like, is this, this is stone baked, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And it's really Aomori song. It's Aomori song. Yeah. 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 Is it a locally grown? Is it locally grown? Yeah. 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 Which prefecture are these uh, strawberries from? Oh, really? That prefecture? Oh, oh no, 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 no. It had, no. What do you mean it didn't cost $1,000 for one strawberry? Get that out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I go back to the UK now, I, the hardest thing I have to adjust to is just going to like, go, go through like my Uber Eats or the local restaurant guide, like to my area and just yeah. seeing nothing that's appealing to me. <laughs> Unless I travel all the way up to London in the city yeah, center. Yeah. Takeout's really good here. Yeah. Takeout in the UK, it's like, which greasy food do you want? Yeah. Like, it's like you get a choice between kebab, <laughs> kebab so pizza, chicken burgers, and that's- I like chicken burgers though, I do. I mean, there's like, I like chicken burgers <laughs> as well, but there's a time and a place for chicken burgers. Yeah. What about you? What's the, what's the best thing? What's the best thing of both? Like, what do you like most about America? What do you like most about Japan? Um, well, you know, the thing about, uh, I liked about America was that it's really diverse. You know, yeah. you could go anywhere and really just feel, um, feel at home. Yeah, like, yeah, friendly yeah. Too. I really it's, like it's the friendliness. It's very friendly. Yeah, you yeah. can have it's conversations with anyone. Yeah, it's very open. But in Japan, you know, it's hard to get friendly with people. I think it takes time. People mm. are more sort of shy and have that one wall between. Yeah, you, you feel like you have to break down multiple barriers to mm -hmm. like really get to know someone. And even yeah. then yeah. it's it quite takes time hard. to be able to call someone a friend, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean? So that's one of the differences I feel, but uh, there are a lot of things I love about Japan as well. You you feel safe, you know, mm. you can trust everyone most of the, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can trust, you know, and the quality is always, you know, very high for anything, not just food, but for any kind of service or, you know, it's, it's great. But I think that uh, you're, spo you get spoiled in Japan. So when, once you start living in Japan for a while and you go overseas, like everything feels slow, everything feels, you know, like in, not, like not up to sub -opti yeah. sub optimized. Yeah, I, I almost understand why some people just don't travel outside of Japan. I'm like, why would you? Like, what are you, what are you gonna Th do? Things just work here. Yeah. Mm. And that's what I love about Japan. It's just, Everything you didn't think about works 
and then except for business, the business side, but just like I said, everything yeah. else outside of that just yeah. perfectly I, I works. I didn't realize the London Underground was, I mean, I knew it was dirty. I didn't realize it was that dirty <laughs> until you go like- you take Oh, the, I knew that, like you, I knew that. Because you get, you get like the, you know, you get the railway to the airport in Japan. It's ultra clean you get in your plane, you get home, you have to get the underground to go home. And you're like, oh God, there's shit everywhere. Well, I mean, yeah. you're from New York, right? Like the oh, New York God. subways oh, are just like another <laughs> level. I, I, you know, I normally feel safe on public transport, but the underground, the, the subway in New York really <laughs> tested my ability to feel safe. Yeah. Okay. But even in the music industry, like, Concert wise, I realized there was a huge difference. Like mm -hmm. when I went to um, San Jose to do my first concert, like, you know, it was American style concerts. So yeah. um, we were already used to doing the Japanese style. And then we went to the, the venue and then it was lunchtime. So um, in Japan, you know, even if it's lunchtime, if there's a lot of work done or, you know, it, no one just strays off, you know, goes <laughs> yeah. lunch break or anything. And everyone like, if you have an hour, that means you have about 30 minutes <laughs> right, right right um after like clean up and everything but yeah back in the states um it was 12 o'clock everyone disappeared and then no one was there so the japanese team was there uh waiting to you know to, <laughs> yeah. i was like oh what do we do and then we're okay so lunch break is one hour so at one o'clock we come back and we do rehearsals again so we were we were planning on that but then like the camera people and the lighting people like didn't appear for another hour or so. And so that sounds like an American con. <laughs> but the amazing thing is even though they don't like, you know, do all that pr preparation stuff. Yeah. Like the, 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 the show, boom, they they do their thing. They oh, do yeah, their yeah. thing. They don't need rehearsal. They, they just, boom, they do yeah, their yeah, thing. Yeah. God damn, that's, I, I, if most conventions I've been to, there have been like technical difficulties on like every every, yeah. every, every panel yeah, that I've hosted. So <laughs> my know, flight, a technical difficulty. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, you know, you know, that's how the world works. And Japan is just very, you know, perfectionism and perfectionism. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just like a little too over cautious at times mm. where it's like, why are you stressing out about this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have 17 rehearsals. Like. I yeah, think exactly. one or two is enough. How many rehearsals do you have for a Japanese concert? Uh, it depends on the event, but we do, a, definitely, we do a lot of rehearsals beforehand. And right. we'll do like, like before the shows, um, we go through like, it's called Genepro, but it's uh, a rehearsal where you do it exactly like- Gosh. So basically just a dress rehearsal. The Yeah, the show, exactly how it's done and you probably need to do that two or three times bloody hell so, so when you perform a concert you're not just performing it once you're performing it like four times exactly in secret most of it when it's a big big, uh, big it's only the last time that counts <laughs> so. Fucking hell. going back like a million topics mm -hmm. i going back to the because i'm really intrigued about the whole anime opening mm -hmm. you know process how do you so from complete start to finish like how do you get the like call where you're like hey there's a show, it needs an opening. How does that all go? And then how does the process go? Like you you write it, you know, I, I just wanna know everything about it. Mm. Cause I feel like we haven't actually like yeah, yeah. Thought, talked about the process to be a waste not to. Yeah. I think it depends on the artist, but um, if, you pro if you're if you like uh, signed with an anime based label, yeah. then there are a lot of like types that need uh, right, artists. Right. So they're always mm. looking for it. And it depends if, you are the one that sort of offers or they offer for you. Mm. It, it depends on the situation. But once you sort of uh, get an offer or yeah. you get a, you go grab an offer, then that sort of starts into the songwriting creation. And then so you, you write all of it? Yeah, you have to make it from zero usually. Okay. And so um, that begins there. And I wrote all the lyrics for my songs, not all the melodies, but um, all the lyrics. Do they those. give you any input on any of that? Like the anime yeah, do, do, you, do you have like any source material? Yeah, do, you, yeah. do you write around that or is it just? Usually we start writing when the series isn't um, complete yet. So we only get like a really brief um, description. <laughs> so what, what, what was it like for something like Batum? What do they say? Just like. Oh, Batum was actually a manga before the anime. So that right. really helped. You got so to read all the manga. You read the manga and you sort of, uh, they ha also have hints like oh, this kind of song or that kind of song. Mm. And then. Um, you try to fulfill their uh, expectations there. But Batum, for example, No Pain, No Game, mm. we had a lot of freedom with that song. Right. So uh, they really probably didn't expect that kind of sort of- <laughs> up, 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 yeah. Kind of song. 
And so, uh, but everyone really like, so it stood out in a good way. I think it stood out and um, they were like, wow, we weren't expecting this in a good way. <laughs> I mean, time, I, I think so. I can speak on behalf of the anime community being like, Back Most banger, people, banger. if not all people, only remember the opening to the show. So, <laughs> so is that like a a one take, here's a song, I'm done? Or is it like they constantly are always like, ah, can you change this, can you change this, can we try this? Sometimes um, they have very like uh, detailed sort of descriptions for what they want, but mm. sometimes it's just completely free. So mm. with Batum though, uh, we had a lot of freedom. So we didn't have to adjust or redo a lot of things. But for other songs, for example, it, there are a couple of um, mm. uh, retakes or uh, recreations, or right. there, there are some songs that I've done, I've, I've written, that have completely disappeared. Off the okay, right, right, so. right. So, when you do an anime opening, who who owns the rights to that song? Is it the did the anime people just get like a license to use it in the anime and you retain everything or like how does that work if you know it might yeah. it might be the label right I'm just, that's probably I think the label, label yeah. has yeah yeah you're so, just like I don't know I make music yeah. <laughs> the, the label has the song rights and so um, when the song is used the the rights belong to the label because I think Flying Dog was like and correct me if I'm wrong it's like a major label that was primarily focused on like more anime music so like a lot of like anime like OSTs and like openings were usually started and owned by that record label. So like, um, I, like, I, I like how you're looking at Connor, like he's gonna know what you're talking about. What? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm, I'm, looking, no, I'm telling you because you probably don't know. Yeah, I don't fucking know uh, yeah, I'm just telling, because like, I, I was again, like I was reading your Wikipedia and said, you know, flying dog and stuff like yeah, that. I did a bit of research. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I did a bit of research. <laughs> no, because cause I was always interested in as well of like how I guess like rights and like distribution works for anime songs, because I feel it's yeah. completely different to like an artist just releasing their own yeah, album. Yeah, I always wanted right? cause you know, a lot of the songs wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't blow up without the animator back of it. So I wondered mm. if there's a system that like, there was like co-ownership or like, I, I'm just really intrigued. I didn't know if you knew. Yeah, it's it's very complicated. Like the rights thing is just, is It is just sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah I've, nightmare. I've always had issues, <laughs> like YouTube issues with like rights and it's always a mess. Like, yeah. you know, in Japan, everything about the rights is huge. You know, like yep. you can't say yeah. certain stuff on TV. Mm, yeah. Um, you you, ha you need permission for a lot of things. Yeah, we've experienced it. Yeah, so I can we, we, The Japan fucking do you have permission hell? It's just like <laughs> never ending. The approval chain is just fucking a mile long. I, I never, like there are so many things. It's like since working with Japanese companies, did I notice, I was like, oh, you need approval for that? Because it was the first time um, that I had, that I experienced like taking off a label off a water bottle Bro, oh. Drink it in front yeah, of like right? media. Like in America, I never even thought about that. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. I openly drink Evian water. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like taking the labels off, like yeah. at events or like that—that that is completely Japanese culture. Right. Mm. I, I noticed so, that the first time actually when I was watching like a Japanese TV show, and I noticed that the water bottle on like the desk or whatever was like mosaiced out, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what the fuck are they drinking? <laughs> what? How, how bad is it? Yo, is, it, this, is this hen? Anti water yeah, I'm drinking, well, like what lolly is, water. What is in this water bottle that they got to censor it? I mean, they'll show you shots on TV and yeah. it'll be like Shibuya. And everything is blurred, yeah. except for like two people walking. Yeah. It's like, don't, yeah. Why are you even showing this? Just like, don't show it anything. It's just, it's just like, all just, the brands in Shibuya and all the billboards yeah. have to be like blurred out. It looks like yeah. a JAV shoot in Shibuya. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's odd because then two seconds later, it'll cut to a shot where everything's shown. And I'm like, yeah. there is no consistency exactly, on this. I'm exactly. so confused. Yeah. And, uh, there must be some rights going on where it's completely flip-flopping and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's bizarre. How did it feel like the first time you watched an anime and just heard yourself singing before the anime started. Oh, it was really nerve wracking. Um, I was probably peeing my pants. <laughs> waiting Cause, for Cause you're pretty much living the dream that I think a lot of like, especially like Western weebs want where they're like, yeah, I can sing. One day I'm gonna sing in an anime opening. Like, it's very surreal. It's yeah. very yeah, surreal. It didn't. It didn't really like hit home until a lot later. Yeah, because do you, do you? I assume when you are producing the song, you don't actually get to see the animation opening no, of like what, yeah. what they put so exactly, to your song. The first time that well, actually, I did see like a, a sample of the opening, but the right. first time I actually saw the official like finalized version was on TV. Right. Oh, wow. So it was probably like the same as you guys. Yeah. You know? right. I was like in front of the screen. I was like. Oh, 
what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> so, I hear my voice from the TV. <laughs> Do you normally skip anime openings? Am I allowed? <laughs> um, I usually, well, mm, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, but yeah. most of Industry the Industry secret. Yeah. Sometimes, but mm, yeah, I, 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 I try to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. If I yeah. like it though, I'll watch it definitely. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with skipping anime openings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. said it. I fucking said yeah, it. Because sometimes, sometimes they're kind of mid. Yeah, I'm I mean, like, let's, let's be honest. Say, like, as an artist, right? When you, when Netflix gives you that skip in intro button, does your heart like die inside a little bit? You're like, oh, damn, my heart. I try to not imagine how many people are skipping my. <laughs> 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 Wait, how dare you skip my banger song? <laughs> No, because now that you work in the industry, has that changed the way you kind of like, not only view anime music, but just music in general? Because like, as someone who works in anime YouTube, I can't look at anime YouTube as the same, or mm. like I can't view it as just uh, to be entertained anymore. I, I, I can't exactly. sh- shut off that part of my brain. Mm. I think it has sort of destroyed a bit of like the enjoyment of mm. part of it because everything I, that concerns like music right now becomes a job for me. Yeah. So I, I start listening to like, you know, I, I it's hard to just listen it for in my enjoyment. Yeah. I do find Cause that. Cause sometimes you, you see someone who did, does something fucking great and you're just like, damn it. I wish I did yeah. that. I wish God, I, I could wish do that. that. Was me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get that every time. I'm just like, why didn't I come up with that? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly, right, exactly. It's like I love this video, <laughs> except for the fact that I didn't make it. Yeah, like I wish I'd have made that. Yeah, I mean, I love I'm you. Going to do it. Yeah, but, they got to it me. <laughs> but this person did it before me. Yeah. God damn, I hate this person, but I they fucking stole, respect they this totally person. They totally stole the idea that was just <laughs> in my head. <laughs> Is there like a? I guess like very general question. Is there like a Japanese artist that you would ever want to like collaborate with in the future? Oh, there are so many, but especially recently, Mm. I feel that I want to do more collaborations. And and so, you know, um, like, There are a lot of artists though. Yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't think we I don't think we asked like who who are some artists that you like or yeah. respect. I should ah, say. There's Japanese, so Japanese or Western? Yeah. Japanese or Western? Well, you know, I Avril prob- Lavigne, of course. Avril, Avril Lavigne, Lavigne. Yeah. right Lavigne. up right up there at the I top. Have to live up to that. No, but I do I do really respect her music, but also like artists like Miyavi. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, but one amazing thing that happened this recently is I collaborated on stage with Flo. Oh wow! Oh, so that was okay. a real dream come oh, true yeah. for me. Yeah. So um, that was amazing because uh, you know I was a listener of theirs. Um, How did that happen? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just no turned up for a four and I was right there. Like, I woke up and I was collaborating on stage with Flo. No, no, but um, it was an event. Okay. And it was an event. Um, and we the event side said that, hey, it would be great if you collaborated on a, a cover song mm. with Flo, which was uh, Sanbun no Ichi Junjo no Kanjo, which was a Runoni Kenshin anime opening. Mm-hmm, right. So um, that was amazing. But the thing is, we met for the first time during the only rehearsal that was happened right before the actual stage. Oh, so, wow. right. So that, that we didn't have a lot of time <laughs> to, uh, you know, get to know each other. Before, so. <laughs> But it was amazing. And th- these kind of miracles do happen when you're working like this. So, um, you know, uh, that's ex- that's always exciting. And it seems like you, you've you just g- had a lot of great opportunities that you never kind of like aim for. It just kind of happens. That definitely, I, I, I'd have to say that a lot of the miracles that happened uh, were unexpected. Yeah. In my career. Next step for you though, is collaborating with Avril Lavigne. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, <laughs> let's see if we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I have to ask, do you watch any YouTubers? I have made a YouTube watching debut. So um, oh, wow. I'm just a newbie right now. So I'm starting to search for good channels and I actually, um, I'm planning to start my own channel as well. Oh, really? so oh okay. I'm sort of studying right now. I'm watching you guys and I'm Well, <laughs> I can't sing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, cosplay badly. What, what do you yeah. do on your YouTube channel? I'm just, Mostly like half of the things I plan to do are going to be music based, but half of the things are going to be like just for fun, just for, you know, having fun with my watchers and me being me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any advice? Oh, that's Uh, a, that's a a loaded question (laughs) right there. You get a clickbait, right? (laughs) 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 If it's you singing, Um, just make it sound crazy. Yeah. (laughs) I sang every song ever. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, titles and thumbnails are like your bread and butter. Yeah. No, if, you don't, I, if you don't have a catchy- What do you recommend, Daniel? Okay, I, actually, I'll tell you what you could do. <laughs> anime opening singer reacts to anime openings. <laughs> That could be a good tell, tell me that's not gonna that's, do well. That's, that's Professional a anime <laughs> opening singer. Yeah, that. Yeah. that would actually do really well. <laughs> right, that yeah. would do really well. Where you like break down being like, okay, this is why this is a good anime opening. Yeah. This is why this is a bad anime opening. And like you can, cause you have the authority to say that, right? As someone who's made, <laughs> as someone who's actually, made multiple anime openings. What, what are some of your favorite anime openings? If you, if you can say that. I really do enjoy like, you know, like I said, Full Metal Alchemist. I yeah. mostly like all their songs and just, I'm a, I'm a rock artist. So I yeah. like rock based songs a lot. Mm. And yeah, so. Do you, do you just listen to the music or do you, do you pay attention to like the actual visuals and animation with it as well? Or are you just like, okay, this is a good song. I like the song. Uh, I think first I'll listen to the song and then I'll watch the, the visuals, but then I end up just listening to itself so mm, yeah. yeah that's that's me as well yeah. <laughs> i feel that's the case it's like yeah if you just like a song, especially as well like if you like a song you at least for me i'm like oh never heard of this artist before i'm gonna i'm gonna delve into everything else that they have and then nine times out of ten you realize okay yeah there's probably a reason why they're known for this song <laughs> but i think you know i do think youtube is about being real and so yeah, i yeah. i want to do I, what I plan to do is to show like behind the scenes stuff of a lot mm, of the music mm, industry, mm. like what I can, what cool. there's, yeah. there's a limit to what I can show, but yeah. I will try to show, you know, some of the down and dirty stuff, you know, that people don't know about, like in the recording studio or like behind the stage in my concert mm. yeah. And, yeah. and all these things. And so I think I'm, I'm I really want to just show people what the music industry is about. Yeah. Because what made you want to start a YouTube? Because this is, very different from the image we talked about earlier of just like, you know, the mysterious Nano it's that exactly not many people- It's exactly the opposite of what I've been doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, so is you, was it, is it just you just trying to find something new, trying to do something different? That too, but also it's just that I feel that it's, it's, it's more fitting in the generation to not be perfect. Like, right. you know, mm. it, up until now, everything about music was being, you know, perfect, but in this generation, it's solely, about showing what's not perfect. Yeah. And people are more interested in the imperfections of, you know, the entertainment industry. So hopefully I can, I've, you know, been singing for eight years and I have seen, you know, behind the scenes stuff. So to share that with the world. Yeah, yeah that'd be super to, interesting. Yeah. Cause yeah. I feel that's like a very unique position to be in as well. Like yeah. we can't just rock up to like, a concert of yours and being like, hey, we're backstage right now. You know, <laughs> this is what it looks like without going through leaps and hurdles of, you know, yeah. approval and stuff yeah. like that. So, and, and I do feel that that's a big reason why YouTube has grown so large in recent years is because people feel a connection with YouTubers because they see the imperfections. Mm -hmm. They see that they're not this perfect idol or perfect artist that, you know, we, a lot of us came up from the same background and, and I know you did as well. Mm -hmm. But it's it might be hard for someone to like relate to that when they don't know all the intimate details of your background mm. and where you came up from. So yeah, that, 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 it was very interesting hearing your story today. I mean, sometimes yeah. it is scary to think that you know showing people like you know the sort of like the mistakes and mm -hmm. stuff of the, the recording studio and stuff. But yeah. at the same time, I think that there are not a, a lot of artists who are willing to show that side. Mm. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm going to throw away, uh, throw away my pride and uh, try to be real with people, you know, mm, show yeah. that, you know, recording does take a lot of effort. There's a lot of, you know, um, mistakes and redos and, you know, it's just effort, effort, effort after effort. And then yeah. the CD is created. So it's not just, you know, you sing it, you record it, you <laughs> put it together and you, poof. I'd you be know, surprised if there's many people out there who actually think that, that it's just like, damn, she nails it in one time. <laughs> I wow. mean, there might be some just amazing people who nail it in, you know, just right, right. one yeah. take, but uh, it's just, you know, it's real life. So um, I'd love to be able to share that side of, that sort of effort with people, you know, mm. how much effort does go into making one song and one concert. And so, you know, hopefully people will find that interesting. And I might, you know, do a few weird parodies. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I might, oh, I'll be very interested. Know, I might uh, sing my own anime songs with the, the cosplay. <laughs> that'd be dope. That'd be, that'd be dope as well. Yeah. Hopefully your channel will be ready by the time this episode goes yeah. up. But if it is, links in the description. Yeah. So yeah. like, when, when were you planning to debut your channel? Um, March, 
14th, I think, or March, somewhere around there. So hopefully uh, it'll be ready before that. And then, okay. yeah, people yeah. can sort of maybe click on it. Mm -hmm. So if her channel is up and ready, it's going to, you can click on the link in the description to subscribe to Nano. And uh, it will, I guess that'll be a week after this episode airs. Mm. So keep an eye out on that for that as well. I feel really at home right now. So maybe <laughs> I can just uh, just park here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, I yeah, can be yeah. the fourth. <laughs> you can be one of the boys. Just it's blame. okay. Yeah, I think blame. I need a trash taste opening. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe after this time, I'm gonna like just happen to appear every time, you know, like fourth, fourth boy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. we'd love to have you back on sometime. I would love to I, be back. I yeah. think, you know, if you're gonna be a YouTuber, you should do our outro for us. That's a very crucial part oh, of being really? a YouTuber. Like yeah. an outro song? No, 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 a outro for the YouTube video. You know, you have to say like, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> oh yeah, Go you gotta, you gotta, get, gotta get used to that. You gotta get used to that. All right, yeah. wait, I think, I think you, YouTuber, YouTuber coaching, coaching session yeah. right now. Okay, so all you have to do is look at the camera yeah. and go, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, and smash the like button. You have to say smash, it by has the way. To be smash. You can't you can't just say like hit the like button. No, it has yeah. to be like yeah. a smash the yeah, like button. Yeah. Yeah. Hold in the sm smash the like button. <laughs> so can I practice here? Yeah, go, go, on, go, on, go, on, go, go ahead. Everyone watching YouTube, thank you. That was Nano. You have to smash! <laughs> <laughs> the like button. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> God now damn. Have to. Now, yeah. now, now you have, now you have to. Like now you have to. And if you're if you're like us, you have patrons who are watching right now. And yeah. Look at all these lovely right patrons. Now. Look at all these lovely <laughs> patrons. Well, I think it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, patrons. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're a natural. Spoken artist. like a true YouTuber. You're going to be starting drama in no time. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to okay. be great. Awesome. Stage awesome. two, uh, I'll help you practice the apology video as well. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll go through that. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys would like to support the show, then make sure to go over to patreon.com slash uh, trash taste. Also, yeah, I almost forgot our own Patreon like, URL. <laughs> also follow us on Twitter, the subreddit, and listen to us over on Spotify. And of course, go check out everything uh, on uh, about now. Yeah, yeah, where, where, where can they where find, where can find, you? find you? Where can you find me? Instagram, Twitter, where, what do you have? Instagram, Twitter, Spotify. You have Spotify? Twitter, Spotify, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah. All Everywhere. those links will be in the description down below. So yes. make sure that you smash them. Smash those links too. Smash and it. the like button. <laughs> smash them. But yes, thank you very much for coming thank on, you Nana. Thank so much for yeah, having thank me. You. Had a lot very of fun. Insightful. Yes. I don't know if what I said is, you know, any, any, any it was you, no, it was terrible. If, oh, yeah. yeah, everything will be cut. <laughs> <laughs> everything will be cut. This, this is going to be a five minute podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the first two minute episode. <laughs> No, it was really insightful. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. So I hope you had and fun as well. I can, you know, join you guys again. Sometime. Yeah, yeah absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. And I will so definitely much. be going to one of your concerts eventually. Thank you so yeah. much. When, when, for, sure. For, sure. When, for sure. When you are back performing again. So if you see one loud gaijin in the back, it's going to probably be me. If you oh, see okay. three loud gaijin in the back, it's going to be us. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys will, of course, join me backstage. Oh, of course. And of course. I mean, of course it was implied, yeah. right? Of course. Of course. But honestly, I would love to collaborate with you guys on YouTube. Someday. Oh, dude, yeah. that'd be that awesome. Be I'd be Hell more yeah. than down for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, that's been this episode of Trash Taste. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye.